Today, we're going to break down the behavior of Fonnie Willis. Today, we're going to break down and analyze the body language of Nathan Wade. Greg, also tell us about the videos we're going to watch. Fonnie Willis is the elected Fulton County DA and the lead on the prosecution of the Trump trial for the election theft. She has been charged or accused of impropriety in in letting a contract with someone she's involved with. And this is that questioning. Nathan Wade, he's the boyfriend of Fannie Willis. Greg, why don't you tell us about the videos we're going to watch? Well, more importantly than being the boyfriend of Fannie Willis, he is the special prosecutor appointed by the DA's office, and she happens to be the DA. And that was ongoing while this whole investigation of Trump was occurring. So there's been a an ongoing, it's not a trial, a hearing in Fulton County to determine what would happen. And the outcome was he was forced to resign and she was told poor judgment. Once the, mo once the motion was filed, did you meet with Mr. Wade and talk to him about the motion that I filed to disqualify you? On January, this first January motion? But, yes. I don't know if you could say talked about. Um, I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion. So I don't know that it was a conversation. As you know, Mr. Wade is a Southern gentleman. I mean, not so much. All right, Chase, what do you got? As we're going through these, keep in mind, there's no politics here, just the behaviors and the things we're seeing. These clips, not the politics, not the case, just the behavior. And holy smokes, is her dress on backwards? <laughs> yes, her dress is being worn backwards. And that's only the beginning. The American flag is also sideways. And I saw that going right out of the, ba right out of the gate here this morning. And she's qualifying the question. And this is a very high likelihood of deception when you hear this, someone qualifying and couching words and uh, about a question. Then there's some disgust on her face when everything kind of goes like this, when we know that facial expressions are universal in human beings. And her blink rate increases to above 50. Just keep in mind, our blink rate is a stress measurement. Our average blink rate is about 17. Then we see bouncing up and down this repetitive movement. And uh, to quote Joe Navarro, all repetitive movement is self-soothing. Then there's a non-answer at the very end of the clip here. I didn't have a substantive conversation. Uh, what this, this team that's talking to her uh, needed to show here, just to give you some context, uh, this week is not just the, the very least either Wade and and or Willis like commingled their assets or shared some type of income or they needed to show that these uh, vacations that they took together that apparently Wade paid for was something that was not reimbursed and that therefore Fani uh, benefited from vacations financially and it kind of amounted to some kind of a kickback kind of a deal. Um, so that's just to give you some context about this. And just in case you were wondering, uh, if I might be crazy, you can look this dress up yourself. It came out in 2016. It's an Adriana Papel knit crepe tied knee length sheath. And the color of this dress is Camilla. And yes, it's literally on backwards. Scott? How do you know all that? Why did you go? I think that dress is backwards. How many times have you seen a yeah. zipper with that clasp on the front of a dress? Ever in your yeah, life? It would either be on backwards or it's a terribly made dress. I mean, just an awfully, mm -hmm. you know, designed dress. Yeah, because you okay. always like, you know, you give a little hand zipper, yeah. put the hook I know the zipper. Huh. So I, I went down a rabbit hole with this dress today. So I found the year. Uh, I found all that data for you. Scott? Wow. What wow. do you got? Right. <laughs> yeah, what have you got? <laughs> all right. <laughs> So at, at the at very first at the very first when when she starts talking, it's gonna look a lot of people are gonna think, oh, I'm seeing a lip pursing where she's doing that. She's actually getting ready to repeat that word one or once or whatever the word's gonna be. So because we're coming in late on the um on the clip there. So it's not lip pursing. Lip pursing we we it, for the most part, we um say that suggests the person doesn't agree with what's being said or what's happening, which is actually what's happening here. But that's not lip pursing. So she squints, and we're seeing, uh, we're listening to her voice quiver. She's really unstable as far as her confidence goes during this. She's feeling a lot of psychological discomfort here. 
when she says, uh, I've got some choice words about some things you said, she's she's moving up and down to the rhythm of those words. And also what we're seeing are a couple of micro expressions in there that are huge. Like the one you're talking about, Chase, is where she does her whole face. And that was a combination of anger and disgust. And we see contempt in a little one here a little while, but it's so small, it's incredible. But not five seconds later, we see another small micro expression of a smaller version of that of the first micro expression. It's anger and disgust. She doesn't like this this attorney, and she doesn't like having to answer the questions this attorney's asking. It's getting on her last nerve. Um, for the first twelve seconds, she blinks almost zero. Nothing happened in there. I think maybe once, probably, and then it skyrockets to eighty four blinks per minute on the average there. As when she starts uh, getting into the to the answer, so as the question is being asked, her brain locks in, so she makes sure she takes in all the information she possibly can. That's why there's not a lot of blinking because she's really focused on that. But then when it starts firing off, she gets a little bit worked up, and as her stress level rises, like you were saying earlier, Chase, that's when the blink rate starts going up. So together, these are all cues of extreme stress that we're seeing. Um, we'll talk about her breath rate later on because that goes up as well. Uh, Greg, what do you got? See, I see body language of altercation. I agree with you. She doesn't like this woman's asking her these questions. But if we run down the list, let's back up a second and say, what are we supposed to do when we're accused? If we are innocent, we protest and we're angry and we make a point of it. And I think I'm seeing that here. And that doesn't mean that she hasn't done anything, but she clearly has an adversarial relationship with this person. There's hard eye lock, and you're right, as she's taking in data, hardly any movement at all. Mm -hmm. Then her voice quivers, that's fight or flight. And I think it's fight in this case. There's blink rate, and, and those pursed lips you're talking about, I agree with you, they're not disapproval, but we'll get plenty of that as we go. Under the desk, she's adapting with her feet, and we see her bouncing as a result of it. There's disgust in her face. She's adversarial outright, driving her head forward. There's respiration increase. There's narrowing of her mouth we associate with anger. And then there's outright contempt. That's adversarial and appropriate if you're charged with something you disagree with, or if you say you're lying in this document, and which she outright says, you're lying in this document. I'm not gonna be as polite. So I expect her to be this direct, this driven. We would expect no less of somebody who is saying, I'm innocent. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I think uh I think Chase, there's a the counter argument to the dress would be that those uh those darts at the front wouldn't work for the back and they're only designed for the front. Um and 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 but why have the zipper at the front? Why the bow in the wrong place? So I think there's all kinds of we'll hear all kinds of arguments around, but you know, um suffice to say if it is um if it is round the right way, it's a terrible design. I think I don't like the design in any way whatsoever with the zipper at the front. I'll just say that. I'll just say it's not a nice design if that is if that's the way it's meant uh to be worn. If it is round the wrong way, well we've all been there. I mean we've all we've all put things on uh incorrectly. Um but what does it say about the state that you're in when that happens? Let's have a look at her breathing rate. It's really high all the way through. That's a, a, a heightened emotional state. Now what emotion? What emotion is it a heightened state here? Um, things that you said, she says, and there's disgust and anger there. So a heightened emotional state around what others have said, I think, in a document about her. Uh, uh, dishonest, she says. And, and, and so I think she is um, certainly emotionally charged uh, around the incredulity of what has been said uh, about her. To your point, Greg, Somebody who is out, you know, outwardly lying doesn't tend to get that charged up uh, about the facts of what they're saying have been lied about them. So clearly, um, you know, I'm not saying at this point that she hasn't done anything wrong, but she seems righteously enraged about the things that are in these documents. And I would say for her, what's in these documents, she believes to be dishonest and, and there are lies being told about her. She believes that to be true. And maybe at such a heightened emotional level that she may have put her dress on, on the wrong way around that morning. That's how, that's how upset uh, she is. One of those tape replays. Once the, mo once the motion was filed, did you meet with Mr. Wade and talk to him about the motion that I filed to disqualify you. On January, this first January motion? Yes. 
I don't know if you can say talked about. Um, I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion. So I don't know that it was a conversation. As you know, Mr. Wade is a Southern gentleman. I Me, mean, not so much. And um, you all start, when did you start dating? When I started dating Mr. Wade? Mm -hmm. It was right around then. Um, that April 2022? 22, yes. 2022. It was a, around then. I don't know, like, you know, it's not like when you're in grade school and you send a little letter and it says, will you be my girlfriend and you check it. I don't know the day that we started seeing each other, but it was early 22 is my recollection. Okay, early 22. And you all went to Florida on vacation as well? I don't recall going to Florida on vacation with him. You never went to Florida with Mr. Wade? We went to, when we went to get on the cruise ship, we went to Miami. Okay, that's the um, only time that you went to Florida with him? I think we went to Miami and spent the night. That's my recollection. Okay. I think we spent one night so that we wouldn't miss the ship. That's my recollection of our vacation. Paid for that hotel? In Miami? Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. Okay. And how'd you get to Miami? We would have flown. And we've done that, so that I'm clear, we've done that twice. I think one time we stayed, and I honestly can't tell you, did we stay when the ship left or did we stay when the ship came back? I also can't tell you, so there's two cruises out of Miami. There's one that's in that October time period that was with his mom. And then there was another that was a New Year's Eve trip. I know I paid for the New Year's Eve trip because the tickets were six ninety seven each. And I thought this is ridiculous that the tickets are $700 to go to Miami. But when you travel during New Year's Eve, you know, they get you. Mark, what do you got? Okay, so uh, really emphatic, uh, loud gestures we're getting on part of this. You're, you're able to hear her, her hand suppress onto the table and make a noise. Uh, now, sometimes she isn't that emphatic. There are times when she is that emphatic. I know I know. I paid for the New Year's Eve trip. Okay, so I'm going to say you, you probably did pay for the New Year's Eve trip. Uh, now, what about the other things? Wasn't so emphatic with those, but this seems to be very, very clear for her. Now, early 22 in my recollection, she says, and there's a single shoulder shrug, there's disdain and contempt. There's a big breath in and out as well. So there's a big cluster of, of behaviours that we haven't seen elsewhere around this idea of when this, I think, the relationship started. And my guess is there's some contention around that. There's, there, there must be an idea that if it started early on, then then it... it it plays better for the for the other side, uh, I, I guess. Um, so she seems a little bit unsure about about that single shoulder shrug. Usually suggests there might be some uncertainty there. Disdain, contempt. Is that for the questioning? Is that for the situation that she's in? I don't know. Big breath in and out again. It's like the brain needs a lot of oxygen around around this one. Is this deception? I don't know whether it's deception, but it's certainly very different from the emphatic gestures we get on other parts. It could be a change in baseline in that um, she, she is uh, unsure about why she's in this situation in the first place. She seems a little out of place here. I'm not saying she's a person that is not used to being in a court of law or the, the courts of law. My assumption is she is. I'm going to assume she isn't used to sitting there and having questions put towards her in this way. And I would say she is off balance on this one. Who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be in this kind of situation? You know, you you came in to do what you you what you're going to do, either for the for the law or for your team, or I don't know why she's doing what she's doing. Um, but you probably didn't expect to be now in this position here. A little bit naive, maybe, but you didn't expect to be in this situation, and now you're you're not on a receiving end that you really wanted to be in. Uh, Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I'm with you on a couple of things. Number one, let's talk about what I call request for approval. When a person holds their forehead up, it means nothing more than 
I, I need your approval. It doesn't mean that they're lying. It can. It can mean that if it's in an appropriate time that you should look at it. But it's an indicator they're trying to get your buy in. So she, it's her baseline. She does it all the time. If you watch her, she's her forehead's up and she's making her points and everything else. But there's a cluster. When you're asking when did she and this guy Wade first get together, she repeats the question to distance. She chaffs. It's not like grade school. When we say chaff, we mean she's spewing out details. She's being snarky in part with the questioner because she's not a fan. But she's also, that gives her time to think. She throws out things like that. And she does that single shoulder rise with a chin point to it. Scott, I know you're going to talk about this. I won't steal it. But uncertainty coupled with a break in eye contact and move away isn't a good sign. We're talking about when this first started. And that's when she says early 22. And then she qualifies to the best of my corrupt, the best of my recollection. I also see that pursing of her lips, this time I do believe is a pursing, and is disapproval. Her respiration is up. It's not as high as it was in the last time, but it's there. Then she says, in Miami. So she didn't remember she went to Florida until you get down to specifics. And then she remembers specifically how much she paid for plane tickets to go to Florida. So that's not believable, but she's not emphatic in those cases. Where she does start to get emphatic, Mark, I agree with you, is she does this. I'm not sure her that her illustrators are hitting at the same point. You guys will have to help me there. But I do think that she has gone out of her way to avoid answering the question about when this thing started. If there's a place to be concerned, that would be it. The second part where she gets emphatic about spending the money seems realistic to me. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think we're seeing the truth and deception just peppered throughout this. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's half and half or anything, but I mean, it's a little bit of both. So when she says, when I started dating Mr. Wade, when she says that as a question, she repeats that question. So she has time to think. Doesn't seem like it's a lot of time to think for us when you lay it out and go, oh, is that, that a third of a second or something? But it's enough time for your brain to 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 start structuring things and thinking up an answer or a um, attack to take when you're, when you're uh, giving an answer. If you've been asked something that you may have to be untruthful about. I got to be careful. So, and then when she says, uh, it was right around then, she moves back in her chair a little bit. And usually when someone moves back in, your, in their chair, the way I see that is this. That means, a, a, that could suggest a couple of things. It suggests they're not confident with their answer or they may be being deceptive at this point. I always tell the story about when I deal with entrepreneurs. At the, when I was at the Entrepreneur Center, I could tell you every time the financial person didn't know what they were talking about and got their information from somebody else. Because when you'd ask them about the finances, they when they would start, they'd back up a little bit. And when I would ask them later, how come you're not the one that knows? Why don't you know about this or that? Say, so I just got here, I'm new, I'm whatever the, the story was. Where did you get it from? From so-and-so told me. Okay. So just from from years of doing that, I, I, I really, I feel good about saying when someone backs up a little bit, usually that means they're not confident and or they're being deceptive at that point. And then she 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 squints to feign that deeper thought about what's going on. Uh, after that, um, she says it was early 20, uh, 22, and we see that single shoulder shrug, and that's when her chin goes to her shoulder. And I've told this story before as well, and I got it from Joe Navarro, where you hear where when someone's being dishonest, quite often when someone, like you were saying, Mark, when the, when the single shoulder goes up, we see that as, as a lack of confidence. But when you see that single shoulder go up and that chin go toward it, in my experience as well, it is almost to the T that person is being deceptive. So just from there are no studies with that or anything, and I have to tell you that, and from my point of view, that looks deceptive to me. Um, we're seeing a lot of, of, of action in that brow, like you were talking about, Greg. A lot of the, the eyebrows being up and a lot going on. It gets close to being a grief muscle, but it's not It's not a grief muscle. It goes. It, it arcs a little bit. Those little wrinkles arc a bit, but they don't come in as an upside-down horseshoe. Like we're used to seeing when we talk about the, the quote unquote grief muscle there. Um, and if you can't remember when you went to Miami and if you stayed before you left or stayed when you got back, it sounds like she's doing cruises all the time. It sounds like she's going everywhere. If you can't remember the things that they're asking her about for your cruise, man, you're doing a lot of cruising. There's a lot going on there. You're traveling a whole lot. And you're, especially if you're supposed to be busy doing whatever your normal, but she may be on vacation. Maybe she takes a month off or something. She does it all then. I have no earthly idea. But she's cruising around a lot. She can't remember dates like that. Uh, then we see at the end, we see those disappearing lips or stress mouth. And that lets us know there's stress there as well. 
when when someone's under a great degree of st- stress, we'll see that the lips literally disappear. They'll almost suck them into their head. Our, and we call it compressed lips uh, most of the time. You see that like that, and they'll go away. So that lets us know there's a lot of stress there. Uh, Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with you all. And I just want you to process this. Clarifying a question that any reasonable person would completely and fully understand That's what we're seeing here. This is what's called a question repetition. When you see it in instances like this, where someone clearly understands the question and the subject matter of a question, this is a gigantic red flag. And then she's saying, not like when you're in grade school and we hand out a note or I'm paraphrasing, she smiles about this. I think she thinks it's clever and intelligent, but explaining yourself like this in court is a very bad idea for anybody. And personally, uh, this is my opinion, I would think a district attorney would be very keenly uh, uh, aware of something like this. Then she says, early 22 is my recollection. There's that single shrug that, uh, Scott, you were, you were talking about. And the other behaviors here, this is a mountain of red flags. There's question repetition, qualifying the answers, hesitancy, single shrug, more hesitancy again at the mentioning of uh, seeing each other. Just this alone is a score of 20 on the behavior table of elements, since uh, people tend to like that, where a score of 11 or more indicates a high likelihood of deception. This was a 20. She keeps repeating Miami when the question is about Florida. And if I'm doing the question here, if I'm the one doing the questioning, two giant things automatically come to mind. Either one, she's unsure if Miami is in Florida or not. And within this conversation, she's also unable to understand which continent, which continent countries are in. In this interview, we're not going to analyze that piece, but she didn't know which continent stuff was in. So maybe that's the case. Or number two, she's locking down her speech to only mention Miami because something else in Florida is being concealed or hidden from me. So if I ask about Florida and I see a huge laser focus on Miami, I'm going to ask a question about anywhere else in Florida. Is there somewhere else in Florida? Maybe a question like that. So the second half of this clip is was so full of stuff uh, that it would, would take me an hour to go through it. So what I just covered just now was just the first 48 seconds of the clip. And that's all I got. I think when she's talking about that, it's like a thing when you're a little kid. I think she's trying to get that familiarity thing with her to make the attorney like her better. I think she's trying to connect with her for that brief second or something. I can't figure out why she would go down that road either. I think she's I, I, I think it's the opposite. I think she's trying to win over viewers. Maybe so. Maybe that's it. I just get that was so odd to hear. I think like there's that a that hell of a lot of sarcasm in that statement. I think she was being sarcastic and snarky. Okay. Picking up on your sarcasm. Y'all remember that line from Tommy Boy? Yeah. So, Greg, point of order, why is this happening in Fulton County? So, because it's where the where he apparently called and talked to the Fulton County guy. He talked to Raffensperger, I think it's Right, name, so it's under Secretary their, State. The, yeah, the, it's, the, it's their purview. The potential crime has been under their, yeah. is under their jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. And Fulton County is Atlanta. When people think of Atlanta, they think of the six and a half million, five million, whatever the magic number is today, people that live in the metro. But Atlanta proper is probably four to six hundred thousand, depending on what you read. uh, People living in Fulton County slash Atlanta. Right. That makes sense. So it is accidental that that she happens to be in charge of this. You know, I I haven't done enough study on this whole thing to be able to answer that for you, Mark. But I know there were this is where they pointed to anomalies and where he called and said, can't you find I believe where he called and said, can't you find X number of votes in this county? I I haven't spent enough time on the actual details of the trial, so I'm not going to go too deep. But realizing that that is a is the core of the of the city of Atlanta. When we talk about the city of Atlanta, it is the city. And then everything else is just neighborhoods, yeah. subdivisions. So it's not like and the potential probably, crime happened somewhere else and they decided, oh, well, let's prosecute it no, in no. this state or this county. It, it is no, it, it's, it's about the right that, geographical yeah. location. All right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, you know, Georgia is a very, Georgia's a lot like New York in that there's this massive city and then lots of smaller little towns 
and then a lot of rural area. So 60% of the population probably lives in the Atlanta metro. One of those tape replays. And um, you all start, when did you start dating? When I started dating Mr. Wade, mm-hmm. it was right around then. Um, April 2020? April 22, yes. 2022. It was a, around then. I don't know, like, you know, it's not like when you're in grade school and you send a little letter and it says, will you be my girlfriend and you check it. I don't know the day that we started seeing each other, but it was early 22 is my recollection. Okay, early 22. And you all went to Florida on vacation as well? I don't recall going to Florida on vacation with him. You never went to Florida with Mr. Wade? We went to, when we went to get on the cruise ship, we went to Miami. Okay, that's the Um, only time that you went to Florida with him? I think we went to Miami and spent the night. That's my recollection. Okay. I think we spent one night so that we wouldn't miss the ship. That's my recollection of our vacation. paid for that hotel? In Miami? Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. And how'd you get to Miami? We would have flown. And we've done that, so that I'm clear, we've done that twice. I think one time we stayed, and I honestly can't tell you, did we stay when the ship left or did we stay when the ship came back? I also can't tell you, so there's two cruises out of Miami. There's one that's in that October time period that was with his mom. And then there was another that was a New Year's Eve trip. I know I paid for the New Year's Eve trip because the tickets were six ninety seven each. And I thought this is ridiculous that the tickets are seven hundred dollars to go to Miami. But when you travel during New Year's Eve, you know, they get you of the seven continents. Um, and so he has both a personal travel agent and he also has a cruise travel agent. I don't know anything about either of those kind of travel agents. So he is the one that would book the travel, but we need to be clear when we're talking about just because he booked it doesn't mean, like I don't consider him having taken me any place. Let me just be honest. The only one that's ever taken somebody someplace is for his 50th birthday. I consider that I took him to Belize. And I took him to Belize because, um, you know, I don't want to discuss his personal business, but I'm happy Mr. Wade is still here with us. And I did 50 big, very big. Um, so still on that October Royal Caribbean cruise. Um- uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so again, um, really strong uh, gestures on I took him to Belize. So she wants to be really clear about about where her power uh, has been. And, and uh, I imagine because she's feeling power being taken away from her in one aspect and she needs to take hold of it in another. And so, yeah, loud and suppressive gestures on that. Uh, very strong. 50 big. Again, loud and su- suppressive. She wants us to know that she she made a big deal out of this uh, 50 party. But around that and before that, it's a little less, it's a little more uh, equivocation. It's a little more ambiguous. Uh, two travel agents. I don't know about those. So there's stuff that she really, really knows, and she wants us to know that she knows that, and other stuff which is now very ambiguous and she doesn't really know about. Um, and then she says, I don't want to discuss his personal business around this 50 and big. Well, you just you just leaked it to us. I mean, you just you just told us exactly what's it. So just so just so you know this, if if I ever come up to anybody and go, listen, this is a secret. So don't tell anybody this. I'm I'm trying to get the message out to every major news agency there is there. That's that's if I've told you this is a secret, and I, I'm I'm going to tell you. Yeah, if it's a secret, you won't hear about it ever, ever. Ever. If I want you to know about it, and I want everybody to know about it, I will take you into a corner and very quietly go, listen, I can't, I'm not meant to tell you this, but so don't tell anybody, but here's the information. And then I'm expecting it to be on the news the next day. So I don't know why she's saying I don't want to discuss his personal business and then leaking to us some idea of of, I, I would imagine, some kind of serious, serious illness with this person. And that 50 was was a, was going to be potentially the last one in, in her mind and make it. That's certainly the, the narrative that I've made out of it. And maybe I've made completely the wrong narrative out of that. But uh, 
but certainly that's what I take from it. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? I agree with you. When she says, I took him to Belize, I think she's taking him down there for cancer treatment and for his birthday. That's what it sounds like when you mm -hmm. step back and just like what you were saying, I think we all came to the same conclusion for that. And that's pretty rude for her to do that, especially if he didn't want anybody to know. That's not cool, man. You can't be going around telling people stuff like that if you don't want them to know. And another part of her interview, she says, I don't want to emasculate him. So what she's trying to say is, is she? I think maybe it would have had something to do with, with, with you know, that kind yeah. of thing, because yeah. she didn't want to talk about what the problem was at that point. So I think that's pretty rude that she said uh, that she was talking about his health stuff. Uh, you know, on TV, and she knows she's, it's going to be on TV, and there's no need for her to bring that up at that point. And then she said, I did 50 real big. She sto shows stress when we see that stress now. So I think those are some of the, the that's, I couldn't get past the part where she, where she was telling about he'd, he'd been, she'd take him down there for a, for a sickness. I'm trying to word this so I didn't come right out and blatantly say something. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, just a handful of things. And I, Look, I, I agree. She's probably divulging something. It could be mental health. It could be who knows. I don't try to conjecture. I just know. Yeah, I'd probably be a little pissed if you said something about me like that. I agree with you guys there. But what I do love is this excusing body language you can't miss when she has sarcasm in her face and wipes away his two travel agents. That's beautiful. That is a good example of a gesture or what I would call an emblematic gesture with your face so that a person is using something that has cultural meaning. I think it's very cultural. I, I see it all the time here where I live. This is my home after all, all that facial expression, just excusing you. And then she does something that's interesting for me. She says, she has said, now let me be clear up till now. Now we need to be clear because she's shifting. We need to be clear. Now we got a pronoun shift and some blame sharing when she shifts gears and starts to talk about who's paying. I want to know more and I want to ask questions. Then she says, I don't consider someone taking me. When you say that, I would quickly say, okay, well, who paid then? Let's just clear this up. It doesn't matter who, who took who, who carried who, who did whatever language you want to use, who paid. That's all I want to know. Let's keep it clean and simple. But they don't. They use some kind of hedgy language and that kind of thing. And then she's got a lot of that forehead up this time more than usual when she says i took him to berlin to belize when she says i took him to belize watch your eyes go out of focus it's an interesting internal conversation her eyes go out of focus and then she disengages down to the right and when i say go out of focus i think they're kind of in the middle and they just kind of go to internal focus and then she drops down to her right as she talks about this something big happened and she was taking him for 50 big i think we see a mismatched illustrator here. And she's emphatic in driving her points down. I think they missed the actual words. So there's a lack of confidence in some of what she's saying. She's shifting pronouns. I would probably ask cleaner, more concise questions, but I think there's a lot of battle going on between these two people. I don't know what their history is. No idea. It could be not history related. It could be related to the case and to the defense. And we're going to hear her get a little more animated as we go through here. And remember, just because a person is fighting against you doesn't mean they're lying when they're trying to hide something. But we'll get to more details and ask more questions in here. We've already seen a deviation from baseline in the beginning, but she's back to mostly baseline here with the exception of those couple of things. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, so I agree with you all. And she's almost seemingly indignant and offended that she has to answer questions here. And she's explaining all of her answers using an upward tone, which is out of her baseline. So this is, we're hitting a hot point. We're seeing a lot of shifts from her normal behavior. She seems to be offended at the thought of being taken on a trip or someone offering her any kind of aid. And she says, I consider that I took him to Belize. I consider that I took him to Belize. Uh, Belize. This is a weird way to say something that should be pretty basic, especially for an attorney. So keep an eye out when people do this in your own life. It's almost always meaning that something's being hidden from you. And when she says, I did 50 big, this took me a minute to understand what she was talking about. And she says it with such contempt that it's almost like she's angry and bragging at the same time. 
and she seems to become very fragile uh, if her level of power or significance is being called into question here. And again, these are all of our opinions. But she has all the behavioral trademarks of what I call a status collector. Uh, and this is someone who uses trappings like clothing, bake statements, belongings, cars, social standings to display status. And they're typically more concerned with the display of status than actual status. So this is an initial read here, and it's just an opinion of someone that's like this. But we'll see if uh, maybe I get proven wrong or right here in the in the coming videos, which I'm open to. One of those tape replays of the seven continents. Um, and so he has both a personal travel agent and he also has a cruise travel agent. I don't know anything about either of those kind of travel agents. So he is the one that would book the travel, but we need to be clear when we're talking about just because he booked it doesn't mean, like I don't consider him having taken me any place. Let me just be honest. The only one that's ever taken somebody someplace is for his 50th birthday. I consider that I took him to Belize. And I took him to Belize because, um, you know, I don't want to discuss his personal business, but I'm happy Mr. Wade is still here with us. And I did 50 big. Very big. So let's talk about both of those. I know he initially paid for it. Did you pay him back? For the cruise and for Aruba. Yeah, I gave him his money before we ever went on that trip. You gave him cash before you ever went on the trip? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so when you got cash to pay him back on these trips, would you go to the ATM? No, lady. You would not go to the ATM? No. Okay. So um, Fulton County pays you direct deposit, I assume? Yes, Fulton right. County and the uh, state of Georgia both pay me direct deposits. Okay. So the cash that you would pay him, you wouldn't get it out of the bank? I have money in my house. You have money in your house. So it was just money that was there? When you meet my father, he's gonna tell you as a woman, you should always have, which I don't have, so let's don't tell him that. You should have at least six months in cash at your house at all times. Now, I don't know why this old black man feels like that, but he does. When we were growing up, my daddy had three safes in the house. So my father's bought me a lockbox, and I always keep cash in the house. Now, I don't do it to the degree that my father would do it, so he would probably be uh, ashamed with me but I always have cash at the house. That has been, I don't know, all my life. If you're a woman and you go on a date with a man, you better have $200 in your pocket. So if that man acts up, you can go where you wanna go. So I keep cash in my house and I don't keep cash as good in my purse like I used to. Um, Cause I don't go on many dates, but when you go on a date, you should have cash in your pocket. So my question was, where did that cash originally come from? All right, Greg, what do you got? So I see, uh, Chase, I agree with you. She is fed up. I think she feels like she's above this. And I think she feels like this is politics. And I think whether she's right or wrong, politics is an ugly business. And I feel like she is being put, she feels like she's being put on the griddle in front of people because of something that she doesn't deserve. If you want to, let's just look at the body language piece of it, that I'm above all this. She's very contained and very curt. And you can see that she is trying her best not to show absolute contempt as she goes through this. Some of that's cultural. You know, we always say, I, I told you guys a long time ago, a good buddy of mine told me one time, you can be passionate because you're white. The minute I'm passionate, I'm angry. And that's an important part to remember that people perceive often in our culture, African-American folks as angry when they're passionate. So I think a lot of times, especially if you're in roles and you're in government, you have to be a little more contained and they're, you know, keep, people are keenly aware of that. If you want to know how she feels, she's leaned back, looking down her nose with her forehead up. That's what you got. That's what you got. That's all day. Bring it. Whatever you got, just bring it. And then you watch her blink rate increase and you watch her narrowing her lips and her eyes and purse her lips finally in disapproval. And then that entire posture change, that's just a Come on. I, I think when you see that, that's authoritarian almost. When I'm willing to sit back in court and go, is that all you got? That's a huge thing. And I think that anger is part of what we're seeing in this reason for all this movement. She probably does have cash in her house. Don't know how much. Don't know if it's enough to cover all this. But the real rub here has nothing to do with the questioning and everything to do with the person, everything to do with how it's being approached, in my opinion. Chase, what do you got? 
Yeah, so there's something in this clip that I I call a detail Mount Everest. And it's about the story of her father and maybe even some good advice for people. I don't know. But when you see a mountain of detail coming out of somebody like this, what comes after a mountain? A valley. And then there's a detail valley. So somebody who offers a tremendous amount of detail about a topic that's completely irrelevant and then offers a tiny or zero detail, in this case, uh, about a topic that is more relevant and more close to the question being asked, you've got what I believe is one of the top three red flags of deception in the world. And this is such a perfect display of detail mountain and detail valley that I'm going to be using this video for training. Uh, when she's asked about getting the money from the ATM, here's what you're going to see. You're going to see a huge postural adjustment leaning to her right. Forehead is relaxed until she looks up and makes eye contact. And this behavior, uh, this eyebrow flash behavior is so programmed into us that I've got a two-month-old baby here at, at my house, my baby, and she does this. She does this to get approval. Then we see lip licking, which is we associate with stress. And it's a hygienic gesture. Then we see eye closure or eye blocking during the denial at the precise moment she makes a denial. And there's some serious discomfort the hand under her chin, then to the front of the chin, then to the face, uh, multiple adjustments in the, in the course of two seconds. Then there's covering the mouth and the lips when answering the question. This is, uh, in my opinion, the one of the largest clusters of behavior that might indicate deception that we've ever covered here uh, on our show at all. Scott, what do you got? I agree with you. Yeah, you covered a lot. I'm trying to get rid of the stuff that you're talking about and not do it. But I think what 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 happens here, we're seeing her set up to and we're seeing a change in baseline here. Because of that lean back when her hand goes to her face and she starts touching her lip and she starts pushing her finger into her face, we're gonna see that quite often after this. So those are the things that help her relax as well. And those are the, those are her pacifiers, her adapters, the way she gets rid of that built up stress and tension and co and comforts herself. So we're going to see that quite often after this. And then she gets really still. Once she starts that lean, uh, that lean back and gets back there, she gets really still. And that lets us know she's trying to, to take control of the situation because maybe she's got so much stress, she's not going to flip out, but she's going to uh, get overheated, let's say. So maybe she's trying to calm down a little bit. And then she starts that the mother of all chaff and redirections. She starts going down this road. It's real. And the whole time I was watching that, I was like, I couldn't help but think of Greg the whole time because this it was it was almost ridiculous how how far out of the way this little story goes as she's going along right there. What are you going to say, Greg? Oh, nothing. Oh, I thought nothing. you were coming to say something. Mark, what do you got? Nope. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, Chase, I liked how you qualified that it's your baby that you have. <laughs> Me too. I was thinking yeah, that. It's yeah. important. It's a, and I want to. I just want to substantiate. It is Chase's baby. He has mine. borrowed it, stolen it. Uh, yeah. um, Go get it, Chase. Show it to us. Really, I have know, a random two-year-old. In, two in any way, <laughs> it's actually you know, it's actually his his baby. Just in case right. anybody worries, that's why a baby is around at Chase's house right now. Uh, you look, couldn't agree with you more. There is a large uh, cluster of changes on this as i see her really getting boxed in by this question around the cash like where did you you know where's your proof of where this cash comes because the insinuation is here especially in a modern age but most importantly in a modern age uh, uh, being somebody myself i don't carry cash at all i can't remember the last time i had any note or coin in my hands and so it's very easy in a modern age to go anybody with cash is nefarious in some way it's got to be illegal if anybody has cash in their hands it's got to be illegal and that's the that's the insinuation uh, here and i think she sees herself getting uh, boxed in now maybe she had that cash for for bad reasons i i don't know but big cluster change here and what she comes up with in my mind is a cultural family and gender tradition and necessity around having the cash so she goes back to her dad and she goes look it was my it's it's a it's a uh, cultural and family tradition to have to have 
cash and also as a woman you're gonna need 200 dollars so that you can you know get yourself anywhere in a in a in a tricky situation especially if you're if you're dating i mean you know given given that there is she gives a a reasonable narrative around around that given the insinuation i think is anybody handling large amounts of cash uh must be you know m- can't be uh telling the I- the what do you have there irs isn't it can't be telling the irs uh where that came from and the insinuation probably is some some underhand payments going i mean it's easy for the mind to wander into these ideas once they've been put forward um so so look nice ni- i i think you know there could be a couple of things going on here Either the cash is nefarious in some way, and and that's why there's the cluster around this, or she knows that there is the insinuation there, and it's it's not a good optic. Uh, her going, I can't. Re- I mean, I just got cash under the bed, okay, and having to explain that doesn't do her any favors. Now, same time, Greg, to your point, look, you don't get into what is absolutely a political battle not knowing there will be a lot of blood all over the carpet and floorboards and to my understanding having asked about this this landed on her desk she potentially hasn't i mean i guess she chose to pick it up or not pick it up but i guess if it lands on your desk you've got to prosecute it or you say we're not prosecuting this um anybody prosecuting this has got to know the other side or, or a side is coming at you and they will not spare you because in politics, there's only one thing you're meant to be doing, which is to win and win at absolutely any cost. And both sides will try and win. Having been there, we try and win at absolutely any cost and we don't care who goes under. Um, and, and nobody's falling on their swords on this one, which means somebody is going to have to get get one in the back. Now with her, we maybe won't know which is the back and the front because because the dress is not is not in. Nicely done. <laughs> I got there. Well, I got so there in the end. Covered. There was going to be something. I knew there was some there was some tie in there. Uh, I'm Mark Bowden. Thank you very much. I wish I had my hat on. I would take it off for you for that. <laughs> that was good. One of those tape replays. So let's talk about both of those. I know he initially paid for it. Did you pay him back? For the cruise and for Aruba. Yeah, I gave him his money before we ever went on that trip. You gave him cash before you ever went on the trip? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And so when you got cash to pay him back on these trips, would you go to the ATM? No, lady. You would not go to the ATM? No. Okay. So um, Fulton County pays you direct deposit, I assume? Yes, Fulton County and the uh, state of Georgia both pay me direct deposits. Okay. So the cash that you would pay him, you wouldn't get it out of the bank? I have money in my house. You have money in your house. So it was just money that was there? When you meet my father, he's gonna tell you as a woman, you should always have, which I don't have, so let's don't tell him that. You should have at least six months in cash at your house at all time. Now, I don't know why this old black man feels like that, but he does. When we were growing up, my daddy had three safes in the house. So my father's bought me a lockbox, and I always keep cash in the house. Now, I don't do it to the degree that my father would do it, so he would probably be uh, ashamed with me but I always have cash at the house. That has been, I don't know, all my life. If you're a woman and you go on a date with a man, you better have $200 in your pocket. So if that man acts up, you can go where you wanna go. So I keep cash in my house and I don't keep cash as good in my purse like I used to. um, I don't go on many dates, but when you go on a date, you should have cash in your pocket. So your office objected to us getting um, Delta records for flights that you may have taken with Mr. Wade. Well, no, 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 look. Uh, I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So my question was... Do you have any problem? I object to getting any personal records of mine. We're not dealing with privilege through a witness. And I'm not, no, 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 I'm not dealing with privilege. What um, we had offered to put them in camera for the court to review, and I just want to know if she has. All right, Chase, what do you got? This, uh, I'm, I'm no attorney, and I don't know this person very well. I'm just looking at the behavior, but 
I've worked in trial consulting for a long time. I've picked a lot of juries and, and worked a lot of cases. Uh, this looks to be just bizarre behavior. I'll, it's the nicest way I can say it. When I was eight years old, my grandmother would watch Matlock all the time, and you would see Andy Griffith rile these people up on the stand and make fools of themselves. And I learned at the age of eight that this behavior is inappropriate for the courtroom if you want to look innocent or if you want to look like you're doing the right thing. I was eight years old when I learned this. The person in this video clip is a district attorney. So let's look into this behavior as a profiler. So stay with me on this uh, quick thought experiment. Number one, we can reasonably assume that she knows this is a bad idea and that she's at least competent enough to know that this would maybe make someone look bad on the stand. Two, we can also probably assume that she knows how to behave in court as a district attorney. If those two things are true, then what might we be able to understand about her level of self-restraint and self-control if those two things are true? So one of the things being called into question in this exchange is her level of restraint and control with finances and maybe accepting gifts, I think, is one of the things on the or kickbacks or whatever. So can we reasonably assume that for almost anyone, if they lack self-control in one area in their life, which is a main area in their life, their everyday job, that they might also lack it in other areas? That's just a behavior profiler's perspective. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, so we get neck protection there, adapting on the on the mic, which we've not seen before. Uh, you know, to your point, Chase, very much on this idea around her accepting money when she shouldn't be accepting money. Well, my guess is, is because of her role, the moment uh, that becomes a possibility, your whole... Every, every case you've ever prosecuted surely might come into question somewhat. So, so uh, you know, my guess is, is she never went into this role expecting that she was going to sit there yeah. and somebody would go, okay, I'm now going to get into the details of your relationships and put your whole career on the line for this this case that presumably landed on her desk, which she has to prosecute on behalf of the people because she's the people's prosecutor. I mean, terrible case to land it because you've got to know if you if you prosecute that they, you know, anybody's going to come at you. They're going to come at you. And, and you know, why is the case there? Because another side don't want the other side to win. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game of two teams and only one of the teams can win. And she's stuck in it. Maybe she took a side. I, I really don't know uh, about that. Um, I'm sure, you know, there'll be plenty of comments around what side you feel she's on, what side you think I'm on or we're on. And uh, and you might be right, you might be wrong about any and all of those, or it might be some kind of continuum uh, around that. Um, but look, she says, I'm not on trial. Now, look, here's the issue, is when you're sitting there in that particular box saying, I'm not on trial, that's a bad look because clearly you are in this situation. You are, you are, the, the non-verbal is, is that you are the person on trial here. And so it's a terrible position to have, to have got yourself into or taken or been put into uh, to be saying, I'm not on trial and there you are in the box. Greg, what do you got on this one? So let's talk about technically it may not be a trial. To your point, Mark, it may not be legally a trial, but you're certainly on trial in the public eye when you're in front of these people. Here's the interesting piece. Let's forget about what she's telling the truth and not don't care. Not important to me in this video. What is important to me is the messaging she's sending to us, to me, to you. And if you ever want to know how people behave in court, they behave in a way that shows you they know they're not in charge. That's not what she is doing. She is showing that she feels entitled to better. She's actually indignant. She does, I object. That throat protection is self-protection, of course. Could be a comforting move that she does all the time. I don't know. But we all know that people put their hands to their throat for protection. She eye blocks. Her cadence of speaking shifts. She starts to go really aggressive. 
And then I don't, I don't see anything to do with deception. I see entitlement. She said, and if here's what I would call, this is messaging of authority. If you want to see a great example, she sits back in his chair, in her chair, throws her chin up, her brow goes up, her lips narrow. There's no pretense of posture in the chair. She's just slack that who, when you're sitting in front of authority of any kind and you go to slack, like that's blowing somebody off very clearly to me. Then we see that, that, contained anger you can see anger now and she's got that emphatic downtone and cadence shift and you can just see it any person records of my own she's after them she's angry with them and she's just got absolute contempt and then she adapts in the chair her blink rate increases and she touches her face that has nothing to do with whether she's being deceptive or not but i will say chase you said it mark you said it Scott, I'm sure you'll have something to do with it. When you're sitting in front of a group of people and whether you're officially on trial or something else and you are not concerned about their opinion, it could be cultural. It could be trying to send a message to your team or the other team. And Mark, I don't know whether she signed up, joined up and said, hey, let me prosecute this or whether it was handed to her. doesn't really matter. She is not concerned with anybody's opinion of what she's doing here, at least from what I can see. My opinion. Scott, what do you got? All right. I think her limbic system gets led up here. And when, when that happens, you you know, you're, it's fear, fight, or you know, freeze, fight, or flight. I think she tro- chose fight during this because we see a micro expression of anger. Her voice vo- volume definitely goes up. She gets louder. We see her nostrils flare. See another um, micro expression of anger. And then she adjusts the mic and then she covers her throat. And then she starts this, this other chaff and redirect. I thought the other one was the mother of all chaff and redirects, but this one is huge. This is just about as big as that one. So she's been, in other words, she's been cornered. We, we, we all act the same way. And she goes back again to that thing where she leans back in the seat and she starts covering her throat. So that's become part of her baseline. Now I think that's her, that's her safe area. And I agree with you, Greg. I think, I, I think in, in a group like that, especially when, when you've got an attorney there and a judge there as well, everybody's looking at you, the world, well, maybe not the world, but the U.S. is looking at you. And you lean back there and do that. I'll tell you what, that that either takes a whole lot of confidence or a whole lot of, um, well, I don't think it's confidence, but yeah, you got to be careful there. But I, I, I think she's, she's in a panic mode at this point. So that's why we're seeing all those things happen with her. Not to go back over a lot of things you guys talked about already. I, I think it is confidence. I think she's confident that she's got a right to say exactly what she's saying. But it's the type of confidence I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I... One of those tape replays. So your office objected to us getting um, Delta records for flights that you may have taken when no, Mr. Wade. Well, no, no, no. Look. Uh, I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives you're confused you think i'm on trial these people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020 i'm not on trial no matter how hard you try to put me on trial so my question was do you have any problem object to getting any personal records of mine we're not dealing with privilege through a witness and i'm not no, no no i'm not dealing with privilege what um we had offered to put them in camera for the court to review and i just want to know if she has that, uh, let's, Do we just have an answer to the question? Um, I can handle this, say that. Let's she, have it. She asked about a personal relationship. She asked when the romantic relationship ended. That's the question. It, it Sometime in, um, I'd say late summer of 2023. So I don't believe me in, um, so this is what you're really asking about. This is the salaciousness of all of this, right? No, I'm just uh, asking about your romantic relationship. When you stopped dating, I, I'm asking. I, I think that me and Mr. Wade... So he's a man. He probably would say June or July. I would say we had a tough conversation in August. So that men in relationships at the end of physical intimacy, women in relationships when that tough conversation takes place. And where, um, when did he come to, I guess the condo, I'm not sure what you called it, condo apartment. Um, Would he come and stay at that condo or visit you there? I'm sorry, visit you there. What condo, what apartment, I want to be clear. So, not your house. I know you classified one as house and one as condo, so I'm trying to use those terms. So, um, there's been more that, see, what you don't understand is because of this case, I got to move. And so, I, Ms. I Mr. need Mr. to- Mr. if you could ask a more precise question. Yes, please, give me the time period. That Mr. Talking. Wade, visit you at the place you laid your head. When? Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So, let's be clear, because you've lied in this, this, let me tell you which one you lied in, right here. 
I think he lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth. Judge, it, this it, is, it, it is a lie. It is, it is a lie. Right. Ms. Willis? You see. Mr. Sena, I think you were going to take five minutes. Do that in fine. All right, Greg, what do you got? So here, that indignation that we just saw, that messaging of authority is gone. Now she's turning softer. Now she goes into an emotional eye accessing and her eyes. When I say internal focus, you watch a person's focus, what they're looking at. Doesn't matter where their eyes go. When their eyes stop focusing on something external, their brain is functioning. They're going through some kind of internal conversation. I don't care where their eyes are. If I look and stare off in the distance, it's a thousand yard stare that veterans get because they're thinking about something else. Then her eyes almost jump up like shock when she's asked another question she doesn't feel comfortable with. I think when she does this is when it's something that's hard to talk about for her. I don't think it's necessarily deceptive. I think it's comforting because there's something that she's feeling uncomfortable talking about. But she's navigating this conversation with emotional accessing, whether it's downright or you can see that she's working on which words to say. She's back to, I want to be clear. She's back to her pattern when she's locking down a fact. I want to be clear, not we need to be clear. She braces her hands on her face, tilts her head, and closes her eyes again so I can see she's fed up. Her voice starts to quiver again that you lied right there. I think the core of what we're seeing, forget all the politics, forget what's going on. If this were a case about a dog biting a kid, you would think, why is this interchange going the way it is? This woman is angry, and DA, President King, laundry person, garbage man, anybody is going to get angry about certain things. And I think we see angry and fed up in her. And when she says, you lied right there, her voice quivers. And then there's a genuine look in her face of I've had enough. And if you don't believe it, now I'm going to quote Mark. Here comes the passion plane. You see her hands come up in the passion plane and her cadence shift. And her cadence, voice, body language, and all that are there. This is a lie. Looks believable. Mark, what do you see? Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, that is demonstrative at that point. I mean, she clearly says it's a lie. Uh, the bureaucracy, the judge, has no appetite for that being said in the court, and 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 dissolves it, not dissolves it there and then, but certainly says let's let's take a break um, on 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 that. So it's all getting wildly out of hand. I think at this point. Uh, I, to your point, Greg, like, I don't care who you are, you get you under the, enough stress. Doesn't matter how you got in that grand position that you're in, get you under enough stress and you'll start leaking all kinds of stuff. She's already told us secrets or, you know, intimate health secrets of the boyfriend. She's now leaking personal opinion around men and women and what she feels is the, is the, categorical difference uh, between them. We get disgust and anger on men as well. I don't know whether that's about a particular man or men in general or her idea of men and how they perform and how women perform under relationships. But whatever it is, it's not a really good optic for her. It just doesn't really look very good to display those kind of negative emotions around one category over the other category. Uh, so, you know, I would say it's all breaking down pretty quick at this point. Chase, what do you got on this one? I, I, I have to agree. And Greg, I love that you brought up, let's like, if you could just imagine watching all of these behaviors about something erroneous about something that's not related to politics about somebody that has an overdue library book and just that's how i tend to watch all these videos just as if it was right. about an overdue library book and that's kind of actually what i tell myself when i'm watching these but at this question of when did the romantic relationship end there's disgust on her face when she's mentioning the date very specifically and her answers are still very ambiguous and vague she openly addresses the salaciousness, I think she says, uh, yep. of all this. This is something I personally would expect someone to do with zero legal training uh, who decides to represent themselves in some kind of trial or cross-examination there. I would never, 
I've trained a lot of attorneys. I've never seen an attorney that would do something like this. So it's just unusual. And maybe that goes to the level of stress. I know she's under a lot of stress. Her life's being torn apart. I can't imagine how stressful that is. Uh, and she's there was uh, she says, I would say we had a tough conversation in August. I didn't answer the question. Then there's mouth covering, which we sometimes associate with deception. But then we see blink rate go up. How often we blink is a stress indicator. And she then lectures us about men and women instead of answering the question, which was not about men and women, but it was about her, not men and women. And during this debate about the condo versus the apartment, this is the most I was embarrassed watching this, like my empathy watching this. I felt embarrassed watching it. It's just avoidance and misdirection and what I call microscoping. When somebody zooms into an irrelevant detail to redirect somebody's focus. And she's saying, here's here's what I heard in this. Here is her answers to all of the all of this statement. She says, What condo? What apartment? But there's been more than. See, you don't understand. I gotta move. When? She says, when? Not where. When? So let's be clear. There's no, there's not a single answer in any of this. There's no answer. So it's hard to analyze for deception because there is no answer. There's no answer at all. So I have a hard time uh, believing uh, it, a, a lot of this. Just It's so much redirection. There's nothing substantive here. Scott, what do you got? All right, yeah, I agree with you 100%. And Mark, also, when she starts talking about men, we're seeing uh, contempt there as well. So mm-hmm. if you look on the left side of her face, left side of her face, then you'll, you'll see that it goes up just a little bit right there, not a whole lot. So, and, and I also, I can't decide if she's mad at him or men in general. Mm-hmm. I would assume it's him, but I, I don't know. It's, it's a relationship, so who knows? But there are quite a few negative emotions that flash across her face as she goes through this. We see anger, disgust, scorn, contempt. Her, lim- her limbic system is still wide awake. That thing is is on because she's angry. And like I said before, she chose fight in this. So she's uh, uh, like you were talking about, Greg, she's adapting with her finger on her chin. And this is she she's in her baseline now for the, for this questioning. That's where she's sitting most of the time. That's the place she goes to to for that. I guess trying to get some psychological comfort from all the psychological discomfort going on. And then actually, after she explains her view of men and women breaking up, she practically puts her finger in her mouth. She has it up here, and it's so far pushed in that it's, it's almost in her mouth. And we connect those as when you put your finger to your mouth, that sends a signal to your brain to relax. So I, that's another signal for me to know this is a really high stress situation for her. Obviously, it would be she's angry and she knows everybody's looking at her and she's still trying to fight her way out of this. And like you were saying, Chase, there is no answer there, man. She's she's just talking about all kinds of different things at, the, at this point. Then she chaffs, she attempts another chaff and redirect as she gets worked up and it didn't work. This one didn't work either. She just keeps getting so mad. The judge finally says, hang on, everybody. Let, let, let's take, we need a five minute break with this. It, and it's just, and I agree with you, Chase. I, I felt empathetic for, for her as well. Cause man, when she looks back on this and goes, holy smokes, I did all this wearing a yeah. backwards dress. That, uh, let's, Could we just have an answer to the question? I'm, I can handle this. Say that. Let's he, have it. She asked about a personal relationship. She asked when the romantic relationship ended. That's the question. It sometime in, um, I'd say late summer of 2023. So I don't believe me and um, so this is what you're really asking about. This is the salaciousness of all of this, right? No, I'm just uh, asking about your romantic relationship when you stopped dating. I, asking. I, I think that me and Mr. Wade, so he's a man. He probably would say June or July. I would say we had a tough conversation in August. So that men in relationships at the end of physical intimacy, women in relationships when that tough conversation takes place. And where, um, when did he come to, I guess the condo, I'm not sure what you called it, condo apartment. Um, would he come and stay at that condo or visit you there? I'm sorry, visit you there. 
what condo, what apartment. I want to be clear. So not your house. I know you classified one as house and one as condo. So I'm trying to use those terms. So um, there's been more. That, see, what you don't understand is because of this case, I got to move. And so I, Ms. I Mr. Mercer, if you could ask a more precise question. Yes, please. Give me the time period. That we're Mr. Wade about. visits you at the place you laid your head. When? Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear because you've lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth. Judge, and this it, is, it, it is a lie. It is, it is a lie. Ms. Willis, you see. Mr. Sena, I think you were going to take five minutes. Be back in five. Did you ever pay him through Cash App? No. You only ever paid him through cash? Well, yes. Uh, but we're talking about, I'm very confused You've never now. given like, Mr. Wade money through Cash App? No. The only money you've ever given him outside of a contract is cash. I didn't give him money in a contract, so that was cute, but I didn't give him money outside, uh, in a contract. What happened, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid, and the county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. And I will ask you about the contract in a minute. I asked you about cash. All right, Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, just a nice move there. That hand up regulator, a little flutter of the fingers there uh, around the cute uh, idea there. But, but a very clear, suppressive gesture uh, to, to shut that idea down uh, the idea here, here that she gave gave him money uh in a contract in a contract she gave him money in a contract um i mean it, to, to her point it was beautifully slipped in there by the i'm going to call it prosecution but again i'm unsure whether she's being it's a whether this is a hearing or a i don't know what the hell i don't know what the hell's going on here uh, oh, really? all i know is somebody wants to win that's <laughs> that's all somebody wants to win and somebody's gonna have to lose uh in order for somebody to win so um so hand up regulator super clear she calls out uh the the below the wire insinuation there uh greg what do you got on this one yeah this is a really good one now you know i said early on i thought, thought i saw deception around the when did the relationship start only real deception i've seen look when people are angry they're going to behave certain ways but also when they're trying to mask things, they're going to behave certain ways as well. Those can mimic each other occasionally. But what I see here is she's honest. She goes on one hand. On the other hand, that's great congruent body languaging. Then she retreats to that back to that. That's enough posture, that authoritarian posture. And then I see something that I don't like. When she asks about sending him money through cash apps or Venmo, she's like, N -n -n -n. she says no almost, but puts her hand to her mouth. And you can see that fleeting look of terror in her face or did I ever, did I ever, I can just see it in her face. You can't miss it. And there's that startled expression with her eyes open really wide. That then makes me concerned. So I've got two things now that make me concerned out of all this, because if people feel justified and angry, they're going to show a lot of the same body language that they'll show when they're feeling fight or flight because they're afraid. So it's just one of those things to pay attention to. And then these two women, their voices are rising and they're on each other's nerves and you can't miss it because you can hear tone change. Remember, I would say, I don't need to teach you tone. It's not what you said. And listen to how they're talking to each other. The tone is so sharp. I feel like it would have been much more effective to have somebody use asymmetric behavior on the other person. Meaning I go, I understand you're upset. I'm just asking you questions to get to the bottom of an issue. Scott, what do you got? All right. I agree with, agree with you. Right out of the gate, she get, we hear fading facts where she's, when she asks, did you ever pay with cash yet? And she says, no. And I see that period you're talking about as well, Greg. That, that for me was, okay, well, I think she, well, whether she knows she did or not, boy, it sure looks like she's being deceptive there. And then she moves back. She touches her mouth. She pulls her lip down. And she freezes. And so the lip down thing was 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 pretty powerful for me because not only is she pushing, she's starting to pull that down. And I don't think she's realizing she's doing that. And then she's confident with the next no. And then she leans back and touches her mouth again. There's a lot, a whole lot of, of uh, but again, that's her baseline now. That's where she feels psychologically safe right there. Then she chaffs and directs one more time and it doesn't work again. 
Mark, what do you got? Oh, no, I've been, it's uh, Chase. Okay, Chase, what do you got? This was hard to watch. It's very, it's, if you have empathy, this is hard to watch. And I expected to see composure here. And one thing that you should be displaying in a courtroom, even if you're fighting a parking ticket, is composure. And I don't, I don't think I need to break down any behaviors here for you. So let's focus uh, on, let's just go through the one ex a thought experiment here for this. Does she know the question being asked? Yes or no? Okay. Would a reasonable person understand this question? I think so. Would a reasonable person understand how to answer a simple question? Was there avoidance and a total lack of an answer here? That in itself should be extremely interesting to you if you were able to just answer those simple questions from a reasonable person standard. Uh, it should be a pretty interesting response to this if she understood it and absolutely avoided it. One of those tape replays. I don't operate like that with my girlfriends. I don't operate like that with anyone. He caught the bill. I caught the bill. Whomever. <clears throat> Did you ever pay him through Cash App? No. You only ever paid him through cash? Well, yes. Uh, uh, we're talking about, I'm very confused You've never like, given Mr. Wade money through Cash App? No. The only money you've ever given him outside of a contract is cash. I didn't give him money in a contract, so that was cute. But I didn't give him money outside, uh, in a contract. What happened is, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid, and the county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. And I will ask you about the contract in a minute. I asked you about cash. Right. What happened is, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid, and the county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. And I will ask you about the contract in a minute. I asked you about cash. Did you ever pay him anything? And I'm trying to qualify my questions. I'm not talking about the contract with Fulton County that, that was paid. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about outside of that. Did you ever pay him anything other than cash? I've only given him cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So you've if we would go to dinner, let, let her finish her answers. If we would go to dinner, I wouldn't give him <laughs> cash because he paid for dinner or I paid for dinner. I've given him cash only a few times in life, probably four. Okay. Probably the most money I've ever handed him is twenty five hundred dollars. The least amount of money I've handed him, probably between five hundred and a thousand dollars. You never wrote him a check, ma'am. I don't have checks. Okay. Um, so you have no proof of any reimbursement for any of these things because it was all cash, right? The testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact. So my question was, do you have I'm any proof? Is that what you're intimating right here? I'm asking if you have any proof that you paid him any I mean, of these The money. proof is what I just told you. You have no written proof. Is that correct? So I have some... Um, probably some transactions like in Belize. I probably spent $500 on my card uh, in Belize. I spent 800, I can't remember, 900 bucks on each of our tickets to go to Belize. I did the $700. I probably got some <coughs> minor expenses in Aruba that would be on a card. But for the most part for those trips, other than, so the two cruises, I gave him money for those before we ever left. Um, Cause they were pre booked let me answer. Well, the, the, the question was if you had any written proof. And so... So I've answered you that I've had written we proof. We can move to the next question. If you've answered if you had any written proof, and that was my question. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'm going to be really short on this one. She does that authoritarian sit back again, that messaging of authority. Her lower teeth are exposed as she says four. Again, it's showing she's fed up with this person. There's rec recognition in her face, meaning in well, the only person we can see in the DA's face when she thinks she's got... The questioner, when she asks her about checks, you see that smile, that smirk, and go at her. But look at her hand. Look at her hand shake. See the adrenaline, the effects of adrenaline in her hand when she says, are you intimating I'm lying? This is a good example. We're seeing this person ramp up. We also see her get 
to be the most vague we have seen because now we're getting down to actual money and actual spending. And she can't remember how much it costs for the tickets to Belize, but she does remember how much they cost to go to Miami. We're getting to some some differences in baseline and how she responds around situations. And this is where I would lean in more and start asking questions. When you're asking questions about, how, do you have written proof? Look, that's easy. Do you have written proof or not? She's telling she's got these statements from these credit cards. Well, ask her other questions. You don't use checks. How else do you keep track of money that you pull out? How, did you take money out of the bank? Look, if, you, if you're not, and, and she started it off early, we're talking about money in the safe. If that money is in the safe and you got it from the bank, you must have gone to the bank and withdrawn it, used some kind of a card and withdrawn it. I'd ask those questions so I could start to paint a real picture, not a paint by numbers where you do one little piece at a time. When you get all this stuff together and you make a big, broad picture, you'll start to see something either truthful or come apart. Right now, I think we're having a difficult time telling how much of her body language is related to fight and how much is re related to flight. If she's afraid and she's trying to get away, she's going to show some of the same things as being angry. And we're seeing a lot of anger in this one. Chase, what do you got? Yeah. I, I'm wondering if uh, the word fungible is fully understood. I, I think she maybe thinks that fungible means non-taxable, but I'm not sure. And I'm wondering if she knows that records are required to be kept for cash transactions, especially for business stuff like that. And the interviewer says, uh, did you ever pay him anything other than cash? I challenge you to find an answer to that question. I challenge you when this clip comes back up. She says, I've only given him cash a few times. Uh, this is extreme avoidance and non-answer statements, and there's no answer to the question. Her breathing rate here is through the roof. This is how often we breathe. She's also breathing into her chest, which we breathe into our chest when we're stressed out. We breathe into our lower abdomen here when we're more relaxed. She's in a courtroom where apparently she spends a lot of time and, and should be reasonably comfortable. Maybe the seat and the context is changing some of that. But when the interviewer says, so you have no proof of any of these reimbursements, uh, she says, the testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact and then goes into cruises, dinners, amounts paid for dinner. Uh, there's no answers here again, not an answer. Uh, and I'm wondering if this is maybe a tactic or maybe she believes that this is an answer. I don't think that's the case. And I'm thinking maybe this is avoidance because we're seeing every stress behavior that we've seen to this point was about either money in the house or money paid to this other person. Keep in mind, none of us are experts on this case. We don't know about the case. We're, we haven't spent hours researching the case. We have spent well over 20,000 hours researching human behavior, which is what we're looking at here. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So, look, will reasonable people do unreasonable things? Yeah, they you absolutely will. You can't just steal my reasonable lines. <laughs> oh, oh I hadn't it. even finished. I hadn't even finished. <laughs> All right. I hadn't even finished. Yeah. So I'm going to say the word reasonable again. Yeah. So, so I'm going to top. I'm going to top your reasonable lines. Will so, Will reasonable people do unreasonable things, yes, they will, in unreasonable situations to them. So for me, looking at this situation, knowing what I do of politics, it isn't unreasonable that she is going to be apt, she's going to be put under so much pressure in this situation because, as I understand it, she is standing in the way of the runaway uh, of, a, of a presidential election. She's in the way, and therefore she will get bulldozed and 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 that just seems a fact from my that seems very reasonable from my my point of view however when she took the job that she or get got elected to the job that she has my guess is she didn't go through in her mind i bet there'll come a day where i'm standing in the in the way of a presidential candidate and and i should be ready for exactly yeah. what's in fact i should watch out you see this transaction that i'm just i'm just about to give this person cash in a very reasonable way perhaps i mean i don't know chase but perhaps i'm reasonable and and because in my world you go Oh, hang on. 
hang on no 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 this will this will come back and bite me i can't i'm i'm either going to do this now knowing i'm going to be caught in the end it will come back and i'm prepared for that or i'm naive i just didn't know this was going to happen so i so you know looking at the behavior here i just don't know where this stands is this somebody um somebody who is who got this position and then is thrust in front of the media and in and, and in the way of an election and and in a totally unreasonable situation for this person and therefore we're going to see very unreasonable behaviors in her place of work right now or is it somebody who has lied who's done nefarious stuff and therefore that's why we're seeing unreasonable behaviors in her place uh of work I just don't know because because I don't because to your point, Chase, I don't know the case enough. I don't know any other details of like here's when she signed up for this gig. She made a definite choice. Uh, you know, she has she has been in conversations with the opposing side and, and she's an instrument to that. I just don't know where that that sits. What I'm putting forward is the possibility that she's absolutely at sea right now, has is is has no idea what to do in this situation, though this is her office, this is her place of work. She didn't expect the tables to be turned on her. And now some simple, justifiable cash, you know, this somebody who just wanted a nice holiday in Belize <laughs> is now being scrutinised by us. I mean, who'd have thought it? I, I, I assume she didn't work that out from moment one and go, I'll need a receipt for that, by the way. This is legitimate. Yeah, that's all I got on that one. Well, I, I'll t say what I always say. The worst few days of my life was going to Sears school, knowing how it works. Right. I'll go ahead and go. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I want to go let you guys sit there. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we have Scott Rouse in the room. We thought you were ventriloquist and we were talking for you. Me not, not to give him a go. Uh, I know it's odd be Scott Rouse, because I talk first, so it's always so everybody gets the impression I've already I've already gone. So yeah, I, I totally get it. Anyway, so her blink rate completely drops here. And she leans back, uh, which is now, I keep saying over and over, that's her baseline. That's where she's finding that psychological uh, comfort. While well, at the same time, doing that to whoever she's talking to. Then she touches her mouth and she thinks again. Uh, as she's trying to figure out what to say. And then she starts that chaff and redirect again. This is, I don't think we've seen this much chaff and redirect. I mean, this is like nine shows full of it. I mean, in this, in this one little show, it, there, there's enough from nine different shows to squish into this one. But when she's asked about writing the check, we can ch tell that catches her off guard because she freezes and then she has that really quick blink right there. And you can see it as her eyes get a little bit larger because it's a surprise for her. And this lets us know that there's an issue there for her. And then back to her baseline for psychological comfort uh, with all that. And then she rests her head on her hand. And this is adapting writ large, especially in this situation. And then she starts another chaff and redirect about the testimony of one witness. And we hear fading facts. She's and she's being very careful about what she's saying because she knows this is important. She has to word this properly because, like you're talking about, Mark, she had no earthly idea. She probably doesn't know how important it is that 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 you have to. T if we get cash or something, shoot, man, we got to report it. I don't. I don't trust somebody to hear some cash instead. Do because yeah. I'm under the impression they're going to write it off. So I'm going to put it on mine. Where they where it gets them in trouble or not, I don't know. I don't care. But I'm I'm always putting mine on there. So, and then we see concern before she starts answering how she paid for things. So she's really concerned about this. I think, I think she's, it's gotten away from her, her, her body language. We all try to pay attention to our own body language as we're doing whatever we're doing, especially in a situation where we're talking to a group of people and going back to the empathetic thing, Chase, I agree with you. This, I mean, I felt so bad for her during this because yeah. I, th I think she's, I think she's just like riding a horse and doesn't know how to ride a horse. You know, I think it's out of control and she can't get a handle on it. She can't get to slow down or anything. I think it's running away with her. So, and then we can see relief as she quietens down when the attorney decides to, to you know, well, okay, let's move on to the next question. So I think that's where she she gets a little relief there because there's a lot behind that that is riding on that, uh, the answer she just gave or tried to, was no answer there. I mean, to, that she's trying to give. So, yeah, I think there's a lot in there, a lot in this. Yeah, just because you're a prosecutor doesn't mean you know how to behave when you're being called on the stand. 
Yeah, it was that. One of those tape replays. Right. What happened is, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid. And the county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. And I will ask you about the contract in a minute. I asked you about cash. Did you ever pay him anything? And I'm trying to qualify my questions. I'm not talking about the contract with Fulton County that, that was paid. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about outside of that. Did you ever pay him anything other than cash? I've only given him cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So you've if we would go to dinner, let, him, let her finish her answers. If we would go to dinner, I wouldn't give him <laughs> cash because he paid for dinner or I paid for dinner. I've given him cash only a few times in life, probably four. Okay. Probably the most money I've ever handed him is $2,500. The least amount of money I've handed him, probably between $500 and $1,000. You never wrote him a check? Ma'am, I don't have checks. Okay. Um, so you have no proof of any reimbursement for any of these things because it was all cash, right? The testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact. So my question was, do you have I'm any lying proof? To you? Is that what you're intimating right here? I'm asking if you have any proof that you paid him any I mean, of these The money. proof is what I just told you. You have no written proof. Is that correct? So I have some, um, probably some transactions like in Belize. I probably spent $500 on my card uh, in Belize. I spent 800, I can't remember, 900 bucks on each of our tickets to go to Belize. I did the $700. I probably got some <coughs> minor expenses in Aruba that would be on a card. But for the most part for those trips, other than, so the two cruises, I gave him money for those before we ever left. Um, Cause they were pre booked Let me answer. Well, the, the, the question was if you had any written proof. And so- So I've answered you that I've had written we proof. We can move to the next question. If you've answered, if you had any written proof, and that was my question. Keep going. Um, when you took office, you had a tax lien of $4,600. Did you pay that with cash when you <clears throat> made that tax lien hole? I probably paid through uh, <clears throat> however you pay. Okay. So, but you were saying that you had amounts of cash. You still had that lien in 2022 when you were saving <laughs> weight and going on these trips. So, the cash that you gave him that could have been used to pay this tax lien off? You gonna tell me how to pay my bills? This is not relevant as it relates to why we're here today. Mr. Merchant, um, if you are you trying to establish that she was insolvent in some way? Um, I definitely was trying to establish that that she did not have these mass amounts of cash that she's talking about. Yes. All right. Ask the re-ask the question. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chase, what do you got? So let's talk about breathing rate really quick. What I want you to do when this clip comes back on your screen, I want you to watch her chest rising and falling as she's breathing. And I want you to try to match her breathing rate and see how you feel. Match her breathing rate, breathe with her and, and see how you feel. If you match her breathing rate, make sure you're clear on the subject being discussed and then see how you feel about something that should be honest and very simple. It should be honest and very simple, and then you'll see and feel all that you need to. So breathing rate is a super reliable sign of stress because it's all about how our body's automatic, autonomic nervous system kicks into gear with fight or flight. So when we're stressed, our body pumps up the breathing rate to get ready for action, and it kind of taps into those deep-rooted survival instincts. So even though today's stressors are more about deadlines than saber-toothed tigers, our bodies still kind of react in the same way. So this behavior here is uh, unusual. Like if you told me that uh, to watch this video and then told me that this was a district attorney, I wouldn't believe it uh, to that point. Uh, so it's just strange. There's a lot of stress. Um and maybe she's outside of her comfort zone, but I don't know what's causing this this much stress. Uh, could be deception. Greg? Yeah, this is a really good one because we see something entirely different. Remember I said there's messaging of authority. Pushed back, putting your hand to your mouth as you think. Chin up, chin's not up. Brow, see that grief muscle? That grief muscle we associate with sorrow, grief, or something very negative. And it's pronounced in her forehead now. Her face is not lighted up. She's not angry. 
suddenly the demeanor is different. I don't know because I didn't pull these videos. I don't know how far into this it is. But what I can tell you is by watching her here, there's a massive baseline change. And she loses the ability to answer a question in that angry, pushy, aggressive back direction she did when she's asked, how did you pay? And you can see her face has got that kind of rigid, stony look that she says, however, it's paid. She's not she's not lost verbal fluency. She's lost the ability to respond intelligently. That's the dumbest answer I heard in this entire thing. So it makes me feel really uncomfortable that when we're talking about these masses of cash she had, now I'm sure whether it's just because she's been called on the carpet for having a tax lien or whether it's that now there's not a rational answer for you having a whole bunch of cash. Now we've got a different answer than anything we've seen in the rest of these videos. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, she's 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 in a pretty hard place there because, I mean, a good answer to that would be, you know, tax systems are complex. There's many complex ways that you can end up paying your tax at the end of the end of the year, depending on the complexity there. But but now you've got yourself in, a, in the optic of looking like you have, you know, complex tax situations, which, again, is going to cause people to go, well, what are you doing nefarious? You know, anything to do with cash and taxation easily pick, uh, creates a, an, an image, a picture there of you must be doing something underhand, which is possible. And at the same time, it's it's not possible. You know, it, it, we don't know. We Well, you know, I certainly don't know anyway. Uh, but I, what I do know is there is a great postural bump there. She thrusts out her chest to say, you're going to tell me how to pay my bills, uh, which is a nice line. And, and we can we, we get a sense of that person in more control around that. We get a sense there, I think, Chase, of that district attorney. You know, there's a moment of it. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the that was the um the confident, you know, person that we're looking for with that that quick one liner and then and then leaves the situation, but she can't leave. She's still there being questioned. Terrible place for her to, to be with the authority that she should have, essentially being questioned in a good enough way that she's delivering enough uncertainty that, you know, certainly in public opinion could cause, you know, her her case to look bad. Uh, and certainly I don't know what other elements they're going to put together with this because it, it feels like here, like, she's the only thing that this hangs on it kind of feels like you know she's the only thing but my guess would be is there's other elements as well this is the first thing you can bring and if this doesn't quite work then maybe there's some others along the line and it's very easy to in that position to go this is all about me um rather than going oh i'm just a small part of a bigger picture here and and maybe i shouldn't be feeling the pressure that i'm that I'm feeling. Uh, anyway, to, you, to to everybody's point, it's difficult not to feel some empathy for this person stuck in a, in a, in a, you know, the great key is where she's sitting right now, never sit there. Whatever you can do not to be in that seat, not be in that seat. I've said that time and time again. Whatever you can do not to be there, don't be there because it, it, there's nothing beneficial about it in many, many cases. Scott, what do you got on this one? Uh, you all have covered everything I was going to talk about, so we'll move on. One of those tape replays. Let's keep going. Um, when you took office, you had a tax lien of $4,600. Did you pay that with cash when you <clears throat> made that tax lien hole? I probably paid through uh, <clears throat> however you pay. Okay. So, but you were saying that you had amounts of cash you still had that lien in 2022 when you were taking <laughs> weight and going on these trips so the cash that you gave him that could have been used to pay this tax lien off you gonna tell me how to pay my bills this is not relevant as it relates to why we're going to pay mr Mission, um if you are you trying to establish that she was insolvent in some way um i definitely was trying to establish that that she did not have these mass amounts of cash that she's talking about yes all right. Re-ask the, re the question. Just one more thing. We've analyzed all the key elements of this situation, and now we're going to tell you exactly what we think in our wrap-up. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I think there's potentially two people here. 
uh, w- whatever the weather, we're certainly seeing some behaviours that don't look good in this situation. Now, why is this? Either because, in my view, we have a reasonable public servant here who has found themselves in an utterly unreasonable situation, which is having their life torn apart in front of the cameras. And this was never anything that she signed up for. And so the stress and pressure of that is going to produce a whole bunch of off the chart behaviors. Could be that. Or it's a partisan prosecutor, somebody who has picked some kind of team who was naive to the cut and thrust that was inevitably going to happen around this. And so that naivety means they're just not prepared for this onslaught of their life being uh, ripped apart. I, I don't know which one it is, but it's but it's probably one or the other or something in between. Chase Hughes, what do you got? Yeah, I agree. And it, I think it's fascinating to see that no matter how polished or professional someone is supposed to be, like a district attorney, uh, our, all of our primal instincts and nonverbal cues can still start peeking through. And I think it's a reminder that we're all human and we're all battling the same kind of internal alarms that go off when we're backed into a corner. It's the same. And I think it hits home this point that being genuine and transparent is so key in a world that is literally, I I think, just starving for authenticity. But it's not just about like calling out deception. I think it's about recognizing our own vulnerabilities and working towards like being a little more empathetic and seeing maybe there's some deception here, but I'm able to see that there's a person who's a human being at the same time. And that's where you become uh, better at being a profiler and using these skills, Greg. Let's talk for a minute about culture and about what could be going on. Number one is people in different cultures behave differently, you know, and it depends on how you tell a story. I think you might find that in African-American culture, there's a little bit more detail to a story than you might get from Mark or, not, well, maybe not Mark, but maybe Chase, a, a little bit tidier, a little concise thing that Chase may do may not be part of that culture. So I'm, I'm going to give that the benefit of a doubt when we talk about chaff and redirect, number one. Number two, there's a hell of a lot of anger, and there's a lot of anger about the situation, and the organism does what made the organism successful. If she's always been treated a certain way because of the situation she's in, and she expects that treatment and is not getting it, that's gonna generate anger. And anger is fight or flight, in the same way flight is fight or flight. We're gonna try to get away, or we're gonna go back at them. We always say when a person's indignant, it's a good sign. So just because a person believes something doesn't make it true. And just because you believe it's not true doesn't make it not true. So all the time when we're looking at people, we're looking at signs and behaviors. We can only go that far. The three things for me that make me want to know more in this case were in the second video when she was very hedged and doing a lot of things that we associate with deceptiveness around the beginning of the relationship. The second one was around proof in writing of paying back those were good indicators that something is hot in both of those places and then finally when he got down to how did you pay with cash when you couldn't pay your lien on your property we saw an entirely different an entirely different demeanor so those three areas make me want to really focus and go back and ask hard questions very concise questions and my approach would be to say miss district attorney Happy to listen as long as you want to talk. I wouldn't interrupt. I'd let her talk, let her tell you however she goes about giving you information because people bleed information when they're talking. That's the only way we're going to get to the bottom of this, not by each of them cutting each other off. It, it probably needs a little more digging. We'll see how it turns out. Scott, what do you got? For all the things we've seen and a lot of the videos that we've done, I think this is probably my favorite for a collection of someone where we can spot what makes them comfortable and we can spot the things that are going to make them not fly off the handle, but but get their their anger up, get their engage their limbic system, because almost every question did that in this situation. So I think it's a great study, and all of the adapters and all of the uh, someone trying to take control of a situation and make themselves comfortable because they're at such a high stress level. Uh, I think it's a great study to see how that's done and see how at least one person does that. At, and at the same time, I think it's a great study into, into uh, for attorneys to talk to their clients and say, don't ever do this. 
don't ever do this, don't ever do that. And there's just a list of things to go down of how not to act, how not to respond, what not to say, and and not to go down these little these little roads that have nothing to do with the answer to the question. So I think I think it's a it's a great study in that. If if you pay attention from the first video to the last video, you'll see great examples of all those things. So I, I really, as much as I hated seeing this, and I feel so bad for her. At the same time, I liked it because we can learn a lot from this situation, as horrible as it is. All right, fellas, think this is another good one, and we'll see you next time. So what do you got? Today, we're going to break down and analyze the body language of Nathan Wade. He's the boyfriend of Fannie Willis. Greg, why don't you tell us about the videos we're going to watch? Well, more importantly than being the boyfriend of Fannie Willis, he is the special prosecutor appointed by the DA's office, and she happens to be the DA. And that was ongoing while this whole investigation of Trump was occurring. So there's been a, an ongoing, it's not a trial, a hearing in Fulton County to determine what would happen. And the outcome was he was forced to resign and she was told poor judgment. Partner, They asked you for documents regarding a romantic partner. So I'm sorry, I, I inserted Ms. Willis's name. Let me rephrase the question. They asked you for documents about travel with a romantic partner in December 2023. And you under oath said you did not have any of those, correct? I did not. Okay. And they asked me about gifts. Right. I never purchased a gift for Ms. Willis. And they asked you about receipts for dinner, receipts for drinks, hotels, bars, and restaurants. And you said you did not have any of those. I, I did not and do not have any receipts for any of those things. Okay. And part of the civil discovery, they say that even if you don't have it in your pocket, if it's within your purview, you got to get it and give it to them, correct? Your Honor, I'm going to object again to the relevance of the, the questions about the scope of civil discovery. I think she's asked him about statements he made in pleadings. Um, the answers are already in the record. And um, All right. To the extent you're trying to establish a prior uh, mistruth, uh, Ms. Merchant, uh, I'll allow you to ask a few more follow-ups, but if okay. it's not there, we have to move on. Thank you. Um, so in... 2023 December you said you didn't have any receipts I do not have any receipts I did not have any receipts but you did travel with Miss Willis in 2023 correct I did and you traveled with her in 2022 correct I did and you traveled with her in 2021 correct no so you only traveled with her in 2022 and 2023 2022 and 2023 is what I recall that's what you recall yes okay um so you just don't remember if you traveled with her in 2021? 2022 and 2023 is what I recall. Is what you recall. My question is, did you travel with her in 2021? I'm not recalling any travel in 2021. So it's not yes or no, you just don't remember? I'm not recalling any travel in 2021. So you did not travel with her in 2021? Your Honor. This has been covered. Let's keep going. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> let's see. You um, you filed an affidavit in this case, correct? I did. Okay. And I marked that already. I gave it to the state um, as number one. Number one. May I approach, Judge? Come in. Thank you. All right. Chase, what do you got? Uh, so what we're going to say is just our opinion and nothing more we're just looking at the behaviors that are present uh we're human and surprise we're prone to bias uh just like you are so we try to keep it as close to the middle of the road as we can in this clip i think it's amazing to hear the judge use the term mistruths here during this and mark is exploding about this i yeah. can't wait yeah yeah uh well when they're talking about the travel in 2021 some of these behaviors are negligible if they're observed all alone. This is why clusters are so important to understand. If you hear somebody is uh, going on a long rant about a singular behavior and there aren't other behaviors there making some kind of cluster, you're most likely being misled. So right here, we're seeing hesitancy and lacking certainty. A change from baseline stops smiling. We're seeing a postural adjustment. Uh, shifting to qualifying statements like what I recall, there's a territorial sniff that I hope Mark will demonstrate for us. Might be a habitual action for him uh, in some cases, uh, and this is why baseline is important and also why change is the first of the five C's in the behavior profiling document. 
Uh, so there's lots of hesitancy when the question is repeated. There's a shift of tense to present. I'm not recalling instead of I don't recall. I'm not recalling any travel. The blink rate goes from the teens, the mid like 15, 17 to the 90s in one second during this question. Then we see lip compression four times. I'll leave that up to one of y'all to define what that means. Withholding, which typically is withholding something. The smile is kind of smugness, and I don't think it's duping delight. I'm open to being wrong about that. Uh, but the blink rate spikes again in this clip when he's asked a third time with the same spike in blink rate that we saw the first time. So this is one of the most classic and perfect demonstrations of a cluster of potentially deceptive behaviors. Uh, I didn't even cover all that's here. You're about to hear three more dudes go through even more stuff. Uh, I'm just kind of skimming the top right here. Mark, what do you yeah, got? Yeah, Chase, it was a little bit bonkers. It was so it was so full of of uh, signals there for something. Uh, just as you say, the judge uh, talks about a, a, a mistruth there. I was amazed by that. I was like, is that a, a euphemism for lying? Or is there an actual thing called a mistruth? Well, maybe there is. A mistruth maybe is something that is is not accurate, but not purposeful, whereas a lie would be a purposeful inaccuracy to get a result. I mean, that's a possibility. I think that's the possibility that the judge is giving. Uh, why the judge is giving that possibility, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But certainly our, our, um, our subject here um, takes up that opportunity to give himself, uh, I guess, a lot of, a lot of room or option on, on mistruths going forward. He says, that's what I recall. And with that, we get this concerned forehead around that, the eyes searching, this big rock forward, uh, the eyes block, they, they get shielded by the, by the eyelids there. There is lip compression uh, there. So something, you know, not quite said that could be said there. There's asymmetry in in the mouth there. I've got a question mark by that, Chase. Is it contempt? Is it a dupe? I, no, I don't think it's 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 either there. Um, and then there's a single shoulder shrug as well on that. So that's what I, I recall, he says, but I think there's a lot of signals that he gives there in a cluster that this could be a mistruth that he... he um, he recalls that. Uh, Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I think the cluster is something else. I think what we're seeing is he is trying to slick something, and I agree with you, whether it's half-truth, deception, whatever, but I think he is keenly aware that he's getting away with something. So I don't think it's dupers. I think it's outright, <laughs> I can't believe this. I think it's outright amusement. The, I think he came here to do what I've said is fourth walling. He came here to tell you something and only to tell you the part that he came to tell you. And if you don't get the questions right, you're not going to get them. So this turns into a dance between bad questioning and resistance because this is absolutely horrific questioning. And if you're listening, happy to show you how to do it better because this is some of the worst questioning I've ever seen in a courtroom. He, there's this dance. Watch him when you see that pleasure in his face. That smile is pleasure when he realizes he can mat adore these poor questions, and he's doing a great job of it. it. When you are working in the intelligence world, we have this concept called essential elements of intelligence information. And it's about what do I need to know? What am I after? And we structure our questioning process around getting that. So you start out with what you want to know, and then you build all of that around it. And you try to avoid vague and compound <clears throat> and negative questions. I think what we see in the beginning, we see him under stress. It's because he's not sure he's going to get away with it. Then when that smile comes out, that blink rate slows, we know that he he realizes he's in a good place. That slight smirk, that chin up, and now he's ready to go. He uses that as what I recall. That sets her up for a storm of awful questions because she didn't ask what she meant. We're talking about essential elements of information. What you should have asked is what you meant. And you, there's lots of ways to do it. But once he says... I don't remember. She says, so you don't remember. There's a negative question. What, how the hell do you answer that? Yes or no? So there's another bad question. This is an opportunity for you to use a leading question, just a simple question that you could say, did you, are you, will you, can you, have you, and you force him into yes and no, and now you pick up and run again. But instead, he goes on to say, I'm not recalling. 
There's lots of ways. You could have asked the question, when did you first travel with? What years were you actively traveling with? How many times did you travel? Then he would be boxed in, but she doesn't box him in. She lets him do a big matador dance past her, and this is setting up the next part. I think this guy's pretty sharp in terms of what he came to do and what he's getting away with. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, I, I agree with you guys for, for all of that. And Chase, I'm I'm glad you're just skimming the top because it would take four years for us to get through all this stuff. If each one of us went and said everything we saw and got into detail with it, unbelievable. I think that sniff is more than just a sniff. I think at this point it's a tick because we see it in every video. And when, I think when he gets all worked up, that thing kicks in and that's why he starts that, that deep sniff like that. I agree it does look like a territorial thing, but he does it every, you know, just few minutes, not even a few minutes, just every, almost every couple of seconds. And again, like Mark was saying, if you see that, the, a couple of shrugs with the sniff as well, his blink rate, it varies, but in those spots you were talking about, Chase, they do go, they do go up. They do go real, uh, up a lot. And he, but the, what, what I thought was interesting is how he pushes his head forward when he doesn't want any pushback on his, on his answers and greg those questions are horrific that is that is all they you know they could have shut that down and gone in fat you know kept going in and gotten everything they need from that guy but no so i don't know i don't know what's up with that his voice tone and volume those there's a difference in those dramatic differences as he goes through these the time he takes to think about these things as he's prepared these are prepared answers because he's talked to everybody in a few minutes we're going to see where they did you talk to so and so he's talked to everyone said how are we going to what are we going to do here and they've all talked and said here's the approach we're going to take and and so that's what they're doing if you watch that that funny fanny willis however you say her name I did a, a couple of videos on her on my channel and show you those the same kind of thing he's doing. She's doing that too, and and oh, we did her on here as well. So you can see yep. the same the same approach he's taken is the same one she's taken. It's it's not you know none of this happened no. And then when they get busted on it, well there was a and they try to to catch it in a different way to say well this was happening if you want to call it that. So they're redirecting the what they're pretending to. Be, the answer to be is something different than they're being asked. So then, then, then toward the end there, we see that sniff, the low blink rate, which he's keeping his eye on that, on that, on the, on the person, on the attorney, and then a rise in his, in his breath rate. All these things suggest you can guy go, you all can go with the mistruths and all that. This guy's lying. I, I, this, this is what you look for deception. This is it. Watch this guy. You cannot miss it. In my opinion. There you have it. One of those tape replays. Partner. They asked you for documents regarding a romantic partner. So I'm sorry, I, I inserted Miss Willis's name. Let me rephrase the question. They asked you for documents about travel with a romantic partner in December 2023. And you under oath said you did not have any of those, correct? I did not. Okay. And they asked me about gifts. Right. I never purchased a gift for Miss Willis. And they asked you about receipts for dinner, receipts for drinks, hotels, bars, and restaurants, and you said you did not have any of those. I, I did not and do not have any receipts for any of those things. Okay, and part of the civil discovery, they say that even if you don't have it in your pocket, if it's within your purview, you gotta get it and give it to them, correct? Your Honor, I'm gonna object again to the relevance of the, the questions about the scope of civil discovery. I think she's asked him about statements he made in pleadings. Um, the answers are already in the record and um, all right, to the extent you're trying to establish a prior uh, mistruth, uh, Ms. Merchant, uh, I'll allow you to ask a few more follow-ups, but if okay. it's not there, we have to move on. Thank you. Um, so in 2023, December, you said you didn't have any receipts. I do not have any receipts. I did not have any receipts. But you did travel with Ms. Willis in 2023, correct? I did. And you traveled with her in 2022, correct? I did. And you traveled with her in 2021, correct? No. So you only traveled with her in 2022 and 2023? 2022 and 2023 is what I recall. That's what you recall? Yes. Okay. Um, so you just don't remember if you traveled with her in 2021? 2022 and 2023 is what I recall. Is what you recall. My question is, did you travel with her in 2021? I'm not recalling any travel in 2021. So it's not yes or no, you just don't remember? I'm not recalling any travel in 2021. 
So you did not travel with her in 2021. You're on it. This has been covered. Let's keep going. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Let's see, you um, you filed an affidavit in this case, correct? I did. Okay, and I marked that already. I gave it to the state um, as number one. And that's exhibit number one. May I approach, Judge? Come in. Thank you. Okay, so let's not talk about when you spent the night. When did your romantic relationship with Miss Willis begin? 2022. When? In 2022. Early 2022. So you were appointed in November of 2021. Yes, ma'am. And your relationship started early. What's early? January? February? Around March. Around March. But you two met at an October 2019 um, judicial conference, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, just one thing here, very unspecific with the date of the start of this, early 2022, and the head rocks from side to side with a lot of the body as well. That's unstable. So we might say, look, he's maybe a little bit unstable about it being early 2022. Maybe it was earlier than that. Maybe it was way earlier than that. Certainly the fact that he's not being specific when probably you would be able to recall other events that went on. I know it can be hard to go, look, when did the relationship actually start? Because the starts of things are often difficult to kind of pinpoint. But the memory has a, an ability to go, well, I remember doing this thing. And I remember there was that other event at the same time. And that event is in my calendar. So I can probably bring it down to these, you know, few days or these certainly this week that maybe things would have been started. He's unable to to do that. I find that interesting. Makes me think that, uh, again, he's giving himself some options for mistruth, for misspeaking, for, for not, I mean, not outwardly lying, but, but potentially being, you know, caught out and being able to say, yeah, you know, I might have misspoken that. I don't, I don't quite recall what went on. He's, he's hedging, giving himself a lot, self a lot of options in an area where, probably he might be able to be more specific. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? I, I agree with you 100%. And he pronounces 2022 loud and clear because that's this is, like you were saying, it's the crux of this case. He's got to make sure that, that's, that, that his side of this is clear because that's what he's getting in trouble for at this point. When did this romantic relationship start with her? So, And he's answered really nothing up to this point. You know, nothing. And he... The, the real answers, the true answers, but he's doing all this while he's smiling. That's one of the things that's getting up, that's getting on my last nerve here. We see lip compression, and that's, uh, like Chase was saying, that's you try to withhold information. Quite often you'll see it when someone is under a tremendous amount of stress, the lips disappear. I call it stress mouth when it's that. It gets really, the stress goes high, and bang, those things disappear. Uh, there's odd behavior around uh, where he says, around March. We see two micro expressions of disgust there, so pay attention to that. Then his lips are pulled down on both sides, and that that indicates sadness. And then he's got that sniff going again throughout this. It's not as large as it was in the first one, but we're going to see that change here in, in a few minutes. And the yes ma'ams are quiet, and that makes me believe what they're talking about is a really sensitive subject. Obviously, it would be. So there's that. This this looks deceptive as all get out. Chase, what do you got? I agree. There's contempt on his face before the question is even asked here. So I think this contempt is for the entire thing. There's an expression of anger that flashes on his face. And I don't think we need to use the word micro expressions. When an expression's on the face, it's still an expression. Lots of other things happen quickly in behavior and body language. We never feel the need to say micro shoulder shrug or micro anything else. It's a facial expression. Watch for the anger and right when it shows up. And I think I'm not even going to tell you when they come together, but I want to watch watch his face. And I want you to see what's being discussed when that anger flashes on his face there. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, there's so many lip compressions in this thing. I start to wonder if that's not kind of normal for him. It may even be part of his baseline. Love to see him outside of this to know that really can't tell. Again, the questioning. Here's a problem. She asks a question with heavy connotation. If I ask you, when did your romantic relationship start? He gets to define what romantic means, where that means physical. There's all kinds of formulas that go into that. And you watch him. He goes and looks around and goes, mm, I think it was in this date. 
And the other reason I think that's true is because if you watch, he throws his chin up and does that kind of odd lip compression that I usually associate with. Well, that's close enough. Usually associate with that. Not normal, not this, but kind of, yeah, that, that little thing. So then he does this tons of lip compressions and she closes with a question she should have started. Describe your relationship. What I would have started off with is I'd say, can you describe your relationship with, with Ms. Willis? And if you said, yeah, we were romantically involved. Well, when did that occur? When did that start? Did you date before? I, yeah, I would walk down to make sure I got the timeline locked down the way I want it. But because you op- ask with a connotation loaded question that has cultural significance, even depending on who you're dealing with, then you get a timeline that's screwed and skewed. And I think it's just another example to allow him to go, that was nice. Nice try. And he's doing, he's actually doing a pretty good job of dodging questions because the questions are so weak. This is good resistance to the questioner. Like Micro momentary expressions. That's what Haggard mm-hmm. called it. I think it's com- the, uh, the only thing I would say about micro that is confusing is people often think they're smaller. They don't have to be smaller. Mm. Just quick. I'm not, not putting really micro expressions fast. down either. I'm just saying there's not a need to always say micro. You can, it's okay to say facial expression. Mm. That's all I was saying. My understanding is when the when they uh, they were originally doing the experimentation, they were shooting on film, and film shoots at 24 frames a second. You gotcha. And the expression would show up in just one frame. Yeah. So it meant mm. that the expression was only there for something around a 24th of a second. And I think from that, the idea of it being coined micro in terms of the amount of time that it takes up, not what the expression, I mean, you could, you know, for that, you know, putting your hands fully in the air, up in the air, if you could do that in one twenty-fourth of a second, it would be a micro expression, (laughs) you know, but it'd be like, it's a big move. It's a massively big move, but it only lasts for a twenty-fourth of a, of a second. Well, Mark, and to your point, I, when I taught interrogation for all those years, I would say, yeah, anything that you need a camera to see, I'm not going to bother with. I want you to be able to see the things that we're talking. So I think it is, it, this is a great discussion because this is one of those things that people get confused around, I think, mm-hmm. that whether it's small or it's quick, I think one twenty-fourth of a second is tough for the eye. Yeah, ri- originally, my understanding is the idea of the micro was that it was a sure. short amount of time. Yeah, I think not that's the size, not the size of the yeah, yeah. of the expression. Uh, yeah, just duration, just yeah, duration. Yeah, yeah. yeah just what duration. You get people all the time are saying, "Is it a small little smirk?" No, it's real. It's just contained. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and then at the same time, you could have very subtle <laughs> micro expressions, which would be a tiny move over a tiny amount of uh, tiny amount of time. Yeah, yeah. One of those tape replays. Okay, so let's not talk about when you spent the night. When did your romantic relationship with Miss Willis begin? 2022. When? In 2022. Early 2022. So you were appointed in November of 2021? Yes, ma'am. And your relationship started early. What's early? January? February? Around March. Around March. But you two met at an October 2019 um, judicial conference, correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, describe your relationship at that point. Yes, ma'am. You said that in 2022, well, in 2022, in this case alone, isn't it true you were paid $303,000, over $303,000? I was paid? Yes, in this case. Phone County, by Phone County. Ah, uh, I see where you're going. So. <laughs> and, and Judge, I just asked that, him to answer the question. If he wants to explain it, I've got no problem with uh, that. Mr. Wade, just listen to the question asked and, and just ask, answer the question asked. In 2022, isn't it true you were paid over $300,000? No, ma'am, that is not true. You were not paid over $300,000 by Fulton County? No, ma'am, I was not. Okay. How much were you paid in 2022 then? So. What I was beginning to explain was Fulton County wrote a check to my firm. Okay. What happens at that point is the checks are then deposited, as you have the bank statements, you see that, and then they are dispersed between the three of us. So 
there was Mr. Bradley, there was Mr. Wade, and there was Christopher Campbell. A third, a third, a third. So when you ask me if I was paid $300,000, the answer is no. I got a third of that that went to my personal firm. Now, once the money was distributed to my personal firm, obviously the expenses come out of that, and I get, at the end of the day, whatever the profit is. So I did not get $300,000, no ma'am. And let me just clarify. My question was not, did you put in your pocket $300,000? My question was, was the law firm of Nathan Wade paid over $300,000 in the year 2022? Again, <laughs> a third of that came to the law firm of Nathan Wade. So you're saying that the law firm of Nathan Wade did not receive checks from Fulton County government over $300,000 in the year 2022? That's a different question. Um, a, a third of the 300000 came to... All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, again, here we go. She doesn't have the essential elements of the story she's after. There's more evidence as she structures her questions on the fly. Now, look, this is a hot topic. This is whether or not these people are excused from the trial of Donald Trump around the whole um, trying to adjust the outcome of the elections in Georgia, if I recall, the easiest way to put it. So nobody down there is screaming and yelling. I'm wrong. It's about the election case with Trump in Georgia. She misses the essential elements. So how was the deal structured? Who was the contract with? If I started off and I didn't know, and she apparently doesn't, I would have said, Chase, how's your deal structured on this case? You'd tell me, well, I'm going to be paid this much. Okay. How is that supposed to be paid? And how many increments, when and to whom? Who got what? She could have shifted on the fly if she'd started that way, but she didn't. She's too invested. And here he is in that fourth wall again. He's only going to deliver what you ask him. That is resistance 101. Don't give information. How many times have you heard us collectively say, when you're on the stand, answer the question. Don't answer what you think they want to know. Answer the question. And he does a great job of that. This plays right into becoming a who's on first kind of thing. This starts to sound so stupid. It sounds like Abbott and Costello, if you know who they are. He is jousting with her, and she lets him get away with one of the best chaff and redirects. Chaff and redirect, remember, is a thing I defined as all this stuff coming out of the back of a plane and missiles follow it, and this is it. All this stuff coming out of the back of his mouth. He's just putting out words until she allows him to trail off and go the other way, and it is a beautiful one. One of the easiest ways to get back on topic all she had to do was say, did Fulton County pay $300,000 for your services? Boom. He says, yes. That's pull him out of chaff and redirect and push him right back in there. What I think is going on here is he's in thinking brain. This guy came here prepared for a fight and is aware of what's coming, and he's together. He's contained. Whether he's purposefully slow or he's doing it as part of who he is, I think he's in in thinking brain and prepared, and I don't think she is. I think she's somewhere else. I think she's so invested that she's animated and she's losing her ability to walk the path. Could be wrong. Could be that she just came in there with a plan to be this disorganized, but I would doubt it. Scott, what do you got? I agree with you. And that first redirect doesn't take, it doesn't, it doesn't work very well. So, and I think this is interesting because he, he does the steepling thing. And I think he's using that as a barrier and just, even though it's buying a little bit of time for him, I think it, I think it does. Then you get that head jet forward for each answer over that barrier so it, that right there tells you a whole lot. And and in my opinion, that'd be a micro expression of dissent. <laughs> Sorry, dude, I couldn't. It's not a micro expression. I'm just kidding with you. I don't care. Uh, I, I know. I'm just messing with you, man. Uh, then, he forget, then he starts his redirective answer while he's smiling. Oh, man. This this looks like somebody, like a little, a little this is the, the way kids lie when they know they're busted, but they keep lying anyway because they don't know what to say or what to do. So that that's the part that bugs me on that one. Then he uses his water as an adapter. It was similar to what we saw you know, when we saw Tarek. You know, the what was Tarek's last name? Anybody remember? Mentori. 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 Yeah, Tarek Mentori it was, it was an episode we did on this guy. From, uh, I'm surprised yeah. you forget. Apparently, you've got in. You got the name tattooed on your. Uh, oh, I got his number right talk, here. So talk I, about okay, that. Okay. Talk yeah, about he's, that. he's in prison. On so your we foot. Talk. You got it tattooed on your foot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Tarek was a bad guy. Anyway, um, 
But this is the behavior we see from little children or someone on a sitcom and they're trying to, you know, when you know, as the person watching the sitcom, they did it and they want you to know they know you did it without looking at the camera and making a face. That's what gave me the feeling of it. So it's so bad. Uh, I think it's just it's just bad lying. It's he's just head for the commode here. Uh, Chase, what do you got? I had that same feeling today. And we had some kids over at the house today. And I asked an eight year old if they received money and then had to pay taxes or expenses, did they still receive that money? They understood that expenses don't mean you didn't receive money. An eight year old. So maybe it's the smartest eight-year-old in the world, but something tells me most children uh, understand this. So this is a redirection. It's evasiveness. It's hesitancy. It's uh, avoidance and misdirection. So he's steepling here, and I've got a slightly different uh, opinion. So obviously I hate Scott. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> no, man, this is what this is about. You, you're seeing it. That's, that's why this works because we all see things from Agreed. different angles. Yep. We do. Yeah. Uh, mine's correct. And well, it doesn't matter if yours is wrong, man. Just <laughs> you know, it does. It doesn't. Does not matter. It's just an opinion. You said that when we started. <laughs> Some, sometimes opinions are correct. So, all right, so let's talk about the steeple here really quick. You'll see every body language person talk about this meaning confident. Always means confident. And what does Scott Rouse teach you all the time? That's what we call an absolutist. But they ignore the context of 99% of the time. When is it happening? What's going on? The confidence here, if there is any, comes from the way that the question is asked. He knows it's being asked in a way that allows him to say no with zero stress. Yep. One thing you'll see here is a lot of his gestures are outside of frame. And Greg talks about this a lot with when he talks about the fish was being this big and the person yep. gestures over here instead of right here. Uh, it, it, it's obvious there's an attorney questioning him who has a motive to make this look a certain way, but there's so much manipulation and, and management for a very simple question that should be easy for a reasonable person. There's not a lot of clusters here. I'll admit that. But keep in mind, these are very sharp questions that are very pointed at one little thing, and we have no control over what questions are asked, which plays a huge part. Questions do play a huge part in the behaviors that we see, in the behaviors that are displayed by people. And there's seven things that you can do to maximize the chances of somebody exhibiting deception indicators. And the attorney doing the questioning isn't doing any of those here in this clip. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I think you're right. He knows that he's on good footing here because because technically there's some accuracy to what he's saying. And therefore, you do get uh, this very technical answer direct from him, very clear, uh, because he believes he's on solid ground here. So he he's clear, he's stilted, he does go out of frame, but he's very clear to compartmentalise exactly how this structure works, which... You know, for, for accuracy's sake, the money would go into their partnership LLC. It would be technically, you could say it's distributed be th between three people. And then the compensation committee at the end of the year, which would be the three of them, would decide actually who'd made the profit from this. So technically, he's able to move around this because she does ask, what were you paid? What were you paid as she finds that he's technically maneuvering around this, she goes, well, no, I didn't actually ask that. I asked, well, no, you did actually ask that. Right. You could say, look, you understand the spirit of my question <laughs> is, is what did you personally receive? But up front, again, technically be accurate to say at that point I received zero nothing it's only at the end of that now he's not going to tell you it's only at the end of the year that we distribute the compensation uh, around this you know it's 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 a little bit of of naive questioning and and for that reason and because i think he's very confident throughout this i think we get a really nice baseline for him as to how he's going to perform when he thinks he's doing quite well and, and and technically, he actually is doing quite well. There's a good argument that he has there. I mean, obviously, um, you know, the, it, it still has a little bit of mistruth to it. 
uh, in in this in this inquiry around what what I think should become an idea of a, the 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 potential U.S. miselection that went that went on potentially potentially potential miselection uh, happened there potentially I'm saying I'm not saying it did potentially it did uh, there that's what I got on that one. I'm always stunned to watch somebody go right to left when they're talking about a timeline of events. There's like, we did this, we did this, and then we did this, and they go right to left when almost nobody does that. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Next I'm video. confused, dude. What are you, ta- what are you talking Because I always do that because it looks this way, right to left. I'm going, we went here, here, and here because we write yeah. that way. Would that be it? Yeah, but he's going right to left. His right. Oh, as we view him. To his left. Yeah. He's going backwards. Oh. Didn't but for that, people you know. yeah. that are very, very well-trained public speakers are trained to do that because it's your timeline goes this way. But I don't think that's what we're seeing. I don't know if he's a litigator. If he is, he might be trained to do that. He's not. I don't think he I is. Think so. I thought he was, yeah. I think he. what I read, he was very inexperienced. Again, I know nothing about the yeah, case. Neither I do don't I. actually care. I didn't even pick these videos. So <laughs> it's that thing where if everybody do this, everybody make a make a cue in the air. Make it, you know, with your finger, make a cue in the air. A question or a cue? A cue. See, that's the way it looks to the that see, that's the way I see it. So I'll do it that way to make sure you guys see it the right way. You know, there's some tests they they test you. I was supposed to say if you're a narcissist or not, you'll make it that way. It's well, nice. I think it's funny that two of you are dyslexic and they would make a judgment about you being a right, narcissist. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I first have to go. Do they measure the lumps? Remind me what a Q looks like. Which one's Q? Yeah, I got to get that. Q. First of all, I got to get that right, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do it as it looks to me because it's hard work. So yeah. it's like, you know, you wanted an answer. I'll give you an Yours answer. Is worse I'm thinking about that. you. I'm thinking about me. Yeah, yours is wor- yours is a whole lot worse than mine. One of those tape replays. Yes, ma'am. You said that in 2022. Well, in 2022, in this case alone, isn't it true you were paid three hundred and three thousand dollars? Over three hundred three thousand dollars. I was paid. Yes, in this case, Fulton <laughs> County by Fulton County. Ah, uh, I see where you're going. So, <laughs> and, and Judge, I just asked him to answer the question. If he wants to explain it, I've got no problem with right. that. Mr. Wade, just listen to the question asked and, and just ask, answer the question asked. In 2022, isn't it true you were paid over $300,000? No, ma'am, that is not true. You were not paid over $300,000 by Fulton County? No, ma'am, I was not. Okay. How much were you paid in 2022 then? So, what I was beginning to explain was... Fulton County wrote a check to my firm. Okay. What happens at that point is the checks are then deposited, as you have the bank statements, you see that, and then they are dispersed between the three of us. So there was Mr. Bradley, there was Mr. Wade, and there was Christopher Campbell. A third, a third, a third. So when you ask me if I was paid $300,000, the answer is no. I got a third of that that went to my personal firm. Now, once the money was distributed to my personal firm, obviously the expenses come out of that, and I get, at the end of the day, whatever the profit is. So I did not get $300,000, no ma'am. And let me just clarify. My question was not, did you put in your pocket $300,000? My question was, was the law firm of Nathan Wade paid over $300,000 in the year 2022? Again, a third of that came to the law firm of Nathan Wade. So you're saying that the law firm of Nathan Wade did not receive checks from Fulton County government over $300,000 in the year 2022? That's a different question. Um, a, a third of the 300000 came to... I, I, worked, I worked with a CEO who was colorblind, and I loved they would come in with these red, yellow, green dashboards, and he'd be like, what the hell is that? My, um, my graphic designer is colorblind. Hmm. Do you have them just use hex, hex codes? 
for everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, 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 I don't know how it works. Just Why red green. He kind of goes, "What about that color?" I go, "That looks great." Just red green and all colors. Like. Uh, I think reds and I think reds an issue. Red green, red green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. And that's a very male trait. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So how you know? Tell you how he got you that? that? I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's a very how, red. Why would he? Why would he tell anybody that? I'm colorblind, but I'm a I'm a graduate. Oh, he didn't tell me until way later on. I but oh, I only oh. hired him because he had a great hairstyle. <laughs> I literally went. There you go. I literally went up to him. I said, "You've got incredible hair." You're going to be my did you, did designer. You reach and touch it? No, no, you know, no, no, you wouldn't want to touch it. It would because it was like it was like sticking up in the air in a kind of this incredible oh. you know, high kind of spiky flat top kind of thing. It was the most uh, kind of gravity challenging hair that I'd ever seen in my life. And I said, "You're going to be my graphic designer." And he said, "Should you should you not see some of my work first of all?" And I said, "No, I don't think that's important." And I was absolutely accurate. I mean, that for me, that that's, is beautiful. That's a brilliant piece of design. Nice. That's yeah, nice. that's a beautiful yeah. piece of design. So, I know you're saying that you only got a third of the three hundred thousand dollars, but you were paid over. The firm was paid over three hundred thousand dollars in 2022. Correct. For Miss Merchant, it's not what I'm saying. It, it, it the numbers, they're, they're there. It's, it's, it's the, it, it's the yeah. truth. The, the funds were paid. They were divvied between the three of us, going into an operating account, expenses paid out of it. Okay. At the end of that, the 9,000 figure is what you have. Um, so that's where you got the 9,000 figure from? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And let's see, let's... Um... <laughs> All right, Chase, what do you got? There's only one thing in this whole clip that interests me, and I'm glad I'm going first because Mark will jump all over this and I wouldn't have anything to say. Uh, his use of the word truth. He uses truth to contrast between his own words. It's not what I'm saying. It's the truth. So what I'm saying is different than the truth. There's more gestures outside of his frame here, and it comes uh, right to the center, right in the middle, when he's talking about this 9,000 figure, whatever that is. I don't know anything about accounting. Uh, but there are not any clusters of behavior that I could see uh, here that speak to deception. And his level of contempt and smugness uh, that's there are in my opinion, they're interfering with a lot of the natural truth signals that I would be looking for. I'd be looking for truth signals, but there's so much contempt going on, it's hard to see. Scott, what do you got? All right. I think the most uncomfortable person here in this video is the judge. Yeah. Take a look at him. He's scratching his head. He's covering his mouth. He's pressing it on his face. All these kind of things let us know that that cat is uncomfortable, man. He's squishing or he cannot sit still because <clears throat> I think he's up for re-election and he knows this is important. It's got to go right for him politically as well as for the people who are going to vote for him. Says, I'm sure that maybe that's the same thing. But this would make me really nervous if I were that attorney because you can you can see what it's it's it has. I don't know if it's I think they probably already know, but I think it's probably dawning on right now what's happening. So especially if there's answers like these coming out of the person on the stand and then the, the judge starts acting that way because he's not calling the things to stop things or, or correct things, that, that that's pretty hardcore. Now, as this goes forward, Nathan's illustrators, they slow down, they get smaller, and they get really low. So that lets us know, or that is a usually a cue we see of, of deception we, we when it's with a, a cluster of cues but we just we see that one thing you're right chase there's there there, are, there isn't a cluster it's just it's just the one thing there and then he uses his clasped hands as a barrier in my opinion at that point and then with each sentence he scoots back just a little bit we see him dis and, and people say he's distancing himself himself from his lie but we get uncomfortable we we start in other words, in a way that's sort of, I don't want to say it's correct because you're not distancing yourself from the lie, but you're you're trying to get away from that because your brain is saying, hang on, man, this, is, this isn't true, this isn't right, and you start sort of closing down a little bit. So I'm under the impression that 
all we're seeing in this suggests deception. And from my uh, uh, opinion, I'm, I'm seeing a guy again, just lying and signing off. That's just my opinion. Greg, what do you got? I think he's protecting information, whether you want to call it lying or something else is another story. He's only giving you what you ask. doesn't matter what the spirit of the question is. He does a little chaff in the beginning, and then there's altercation. And Chase, 100% agree with you. I see anger and contempt and all of that around the truth. And if we think back to Fonnie Willis, she did the same exact thing, and she was downright angry. She said then, you know, he's more of a Southern gentleman, not me, not so much. So she was more aggressive. But you're seeing it leak through him. And that's the beautiful thing about what we say as body language. I often say to people when they say, that's all snake oil, I just roll my eyes at them and they get irritated. And I just say, well, clearly it's not snake oil. It's just that you don't understand it. And what we see here is him bleeding contempt for the person who's asked a question. He's responding to it with what he intended to do. And I'll just leave it at that and say he's confident here. I, I see confidence. I agree with you, Chase. Not I don't see clusters. I see confidence because he's angry and he knows he's delivering the answer to the question she asked, not the other. And, you know, when we say angry, angry is a relative thing. He's not belligerent and that kind of thing. He's just like, why would you ask me that? That's indignation. That's anger. That's whatever you want to call it in people. And I think that's what we're seeing. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, only, only to say, Chase, I think you, you must have uh, a monitoring system on me there as, as we have. It's the truth there. Yeah. So either you have cameras in here or you're you're plugged into the cameras that the Chinese consulate has put here from just around the corner. Yeah. It's, well, it's got to be one or the other. That. It's got to be one or the other that somebody's 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 monitoring me somewhere. Uh, yeah, I, I think, look, I think he's having seen the video beforehand. I think he's slightly less assured on this one. Still confident, as you say there, Greg, in terms of of there's some there's some anger there just as you say it's not huge anger but there there is some um you know forthrightness there he leans forward into it but he's a lot less direct with his gestures than he was on the first one uh, i think the technical idea in 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 that uh, third video the one that we had before i think he was on sure footing there the idea of it's not what i'm saying it's the truth um uh, suggesting that because it's in accountancy form, therefore numbers are always the truth. No, they might be factual, uh, but they can still be uh, inaccurate or, or or miscalculated in or some cash. way. <laughs> or cash, or cash. So just not not there. Yeah, or cash. I hadn't thought about the cash. Yeah, could be could be in cash. Um, so uh, so yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, let's have another. Let's see what we got next. So really quick, Scott, this is a picture every time I wear denim on my upper mm -hmm. body. My sister and I were in full denim. Oh, double denim. For a, like an elementary middle school photo. And uh, back in go. Texas, they call it a Canadian tuxedo. Yes. I don't know if you've ever heard that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. But yeah. this was the photo. I don't know if it'll show uh, up. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Oh, fantastic. Cool photo. Fantastic. Oh, dude. Oh, it's a dog's name. You're wearing a you dog like on William. your lower half there, though. You, you look you look like your kid. What was the little yeah. dog's name? You do. Uh, that was Bo. No. Do I need How to take your kid's he? name out of there? The most chase? 80s photo. No. How old was he? Say 22. 11. Oh, oh, that's an old dog. Bless his heart. Double denim chase. That is one of the most um, tricky fashion statements to to pull off double denim let's see it let's see it pulled off pulled it off. Pulled off very nicely very nicely yeah because you, you can't care fair play well. fair play <laughs> cowboys yeah. do it all the time fair play one of those tape replays so i know you're saying that you only got a third of the three hundred thousand dollars but you were paid over the firm was paid over three hundred thousand dollars in 2022 correct miss merchant it's not what i'm saying it, it their numbers, they're, they're there. It's, it's it's the it's the truth. The the funds were paid. They were divvied between the three of us, going into an operating account. Expenses paid out of it. Okay. At the end of that, the nine thousand figure is what you have. Um. So that's where you got the nine thousand figure from. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And let's see. Let's um. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, Aruba, October 2022. And I've got um, business record certificate for these, Judge. It might be a little faster. Um, but did you did you take a trip with her to Aruba in 2022? Yes, ma'am. So that Aruba trip um, was so there was a package deal there. We um, my mother had recently retired. And I decided to take my mother on a cruise. Okay. Um, and the second leg after the cruise concluded, um, D.A. Willis and I went to Aruba. So that was all one, one trip, if you will. Okay. So my question was, did you go with D.A. Willis to Aruba in 2022? I did. Thank you. <coughs> and you paid for that trip using your business credit card, correct? I did. Okay. And you paid for a cruise as well, correct? That, that's the cruise I was referencing with D.A. Willis, my mother, and myself. Okay, and because there's two cruises, so let's just talk about the first one. Okay. So the first one was um, you took, that's the one with your mother? Yes. And so you introduced D.A. Willis to your mother. That trip, you all took a cruise together, the three of you. Yes. After the cruise was done, you and D.A. Willis flew to Aruba together, and your mom flew home. Yes. And you paid for all of this with your credit card, on your business credit card. I did. And are you saying that Ms. Willis paid you cash back for that? She did. And now, no, but, but let, let me make this distinction, though. Um, because the, the number that you're looking at reflects the three people on the cruise ship. There were things that my mother and I did. Um, just the two of us that D.A. Willis didn't didn't do. And, and and I'm not attributing that. I did not. My math is not good, but I did not include anything with your mother um, on well, this. Well, I show, would, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's not separated out. Um, it, it, it just shows a charge on the on the uh, on the account when actually it would have been something with my mother and I. Um, Judge may approach with exhibits 10 and 11. They're both certified business records from, one's from Vacation Express, one's from H2O. I thought 10 was taxes. I'm sorry, 11 and 12. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. And um, these are business records, Judge. All right, Greg, what do you got? You know he's going to leave that in. Mm -hmm. I'll, okay, know, I I'll, I'll leave it out. I it's okay. When, it Wednesday's out. coming quick, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. All right. So here's more chat. I ask you a simple question. Did you go on a vacation with Miss Willis? Well, you know, it was Tuesday and it was raining and I wanted a um, a bagel. So when I went down there, they were selling cats right next door and I'm allergic to cats. So I had to go get that's a chaff if you ever heard one. It allows you, number one, to move in any direction you want if you're eloquent with it, but it also gives you time to think. You can use preambles or just word filler. And I always say to people, if you don't know how to talk in front of people, come up with a series of stupid statements. Like, all you have to do is consider. Well, there's free time for you to think. And this guy's doing it. He slows his speech, pat his speech pattern so you know he's thinking as he goes. When she's when she gets to good hard questions like "Did you pay for a trip?" He says, "I did." Anytime you ask him a hard, direct, good question, he responds. But then he chaffs again at the Aruba trips and feeds her all this information that she has no need to know, and that's a waste of time, a waste of her questioning, and it's because her questions aren't good. That containment he's showing to me is really deliberate. Now, when he first started, he was more free flowing, and if you don't believe that he is starting to feel a little bit of stress around this topic. Watch him look for what to do with his hands after he's done with moving his hands. And then he grabs that water when she's approach, approaching the bench. What we know is that often people who appear to be confident, if you pay attention long enough and keep the camera on them, they'll do something odd, like look for places to put their hands, look for where to put a piece of paper or do something. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, let me answer that in, as part of a package, uh, Greg. Uh, <laughs> so. Do you like chicken? See, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna store that idea. That's a great 
That's a great little time saver, isn't it? Part of a package. Now, I see why he goes uh, as part of a package there and, and, and this unnecessary clarification of getting his mother involved with it. Well, listen, I, I was all for this. This guy is just generally, you know, mistruthing all over the place. And then I found out that he took his mother on holiday. And then I was like, oh, okay, give the guy a break. It's a nice guy taking his mum on holiday. Come on. What could be wrong? What could it, what can he have done wrong? Guy's taking his mum on a cruise. And then and then picks up his girlfriend uh, on the way as part of a part of a package. Here's what I love about this one: you paid for that using your business credit card. She says it's a clear question, isn't it, Greg? You paid for that using your business credit card. He he replies, "I did." And then there's a lip retraction there. It's interesting. The lips are very very sensitive. You know, just like some of those delicate parts of the body that will protect under stress and pressure. And so I think that lip retraction there is to protect that vulnerable area of the of the of the body there uh that's a bit of a mistake that number one he takes his mum on a cruise using the business credit card now i understand you know at the end of the year your accountant can go hey so i see this on your business credit card was that for business use or personal use and you can adjust that and go actually that was for personal use, so put that down as income. We can adjust this at the end of the year. That's what accountants uh, are, are able to do and should be able to do, of course. But I think he knows that's a bit of a mistake that he's had to go. Yes, I did. I'm 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 taking my mum on holiday as as a potential. It looks like a business expense because then, as part of the package, if he then takes the DA on a cruise using the business credit card. I mean, I understand that he says he's getting cash back at the end of this, but it starts to look like taking the DA on a cruise is a business expense. And if it's a business expense, then there's a business advantage to taking the the, the attorney uh, out on a cruise. And now that looks really bad. Like that's, that's not, you, you, you can't, that looks like, uh, a bribe. I mean, it just it, it does. I'm not saying it was, um, but it it can easily look like that. And I think that lip retraction is realizing, uh oh, I've made a mistake here. Number one, uh, saying yes, I did, but it's the truth, <laughs> you did, and also just using your business credit card for this kind of thing. Although you can readjust at the end of the year, it doesn't look good in court up front. Scott, what do you got on this one? I agree with you. And there's no smiling here. And I think that's important because so far when he's given these answers, he got that smile going like he's selling you something, right? But this is really important, this thing. I think he's gotten so much information from his attorneys and the, the things they've talked about to deliver and how to answer things. I think at this point, he didn't pay a lot of attention to this because he thinks he's going to remember everything. And I think that that's why he's having problems d delivering this smoothly. His, because his cadence slows down, the spaces between his words and sentences are huge uh, in comparison to what they've been so far. And uh, he's being really careful to word everything correctly, the way it should sound. Now, I, I think he's thought about this, but like I was saying before, I don't think he said it out loud. That's why the structure sounds kind of odd when he's talking about it. So, and I found it interesting that that he moves his mouth and says what the attorney says while she talks. You know, it's almost like a like a really bad ventriloquist yeah as his mouth is moving when she says something his is just mouth along along with her some people do that i don't know why they do it it's the weirdest thing in the world when somebody's doing that to you one time i was doing a training thing and i was i was talking to these guys and i was looking at this one guy because everything i said he was saying it too it was just and it was like almost in time delay. with me yeah it was just weird it just just totally caught me off guard so when he answers, he, saw, he sounds like somebody who's experienced a, a, a traumatic event and he's recalling it for the court. That's what it reminded me of, is hearing something like that. So it's, it's odd. And when he explains what, he's, what he and his mother did, his, his illustrators don't land on, on in the right spot when they should land. Because since you're emphasizing specific words and phrases, they should, should end and you know, hit on the specific words and phrases, and they don't hear. So that's interesting as, as well. So let's just know he's got inner dialogue going on up there, and he's thinking about what he's saying, and he's probably thinking about what he's going to say next because this is probably coming out of his mouth for the first time since he hasn't talked about this yet. All right, Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I think you all covered 
pretty much everything. I didn't see any body language packages <laughs> of deception here. But that's not to say that it wasn't or that it is truthful. We saw verbal signs of deception here. Greg, you covered all of those. Scott, you covered a lot, uh, two or three more of those. So we're just seeing seeing what's present here. And when there's no deception indicators, we're not going to make them up. Uh, we just shared a video in our signal chat group a couple of days ago of someone just making stuff up. And they were on TV doing that. So uh, the way that questions are asked is very important. That's all I got. Aruba, October 2022. And I've got um, business record certificate for these, Judge. It might be a little faster. Um, but did you... Did you take a trip with her to Aruba in 2022? Yes, ma'am. So that Aruba trip um, was, so it was a package deal there. We, um, my mother had recently retired and I decided to take my mother on a cruise. Okay. Um, and the second leg after the cruise concluded, um, D.A. Willis and I went to Aruba. So that was all one one trip, if you will. Okay. So my question was, did you go with D.A. Willis to Aruba in 2022? I did. Thank you. <clears throat> and you paid for that trip using your business credit card, correct? I did. Okay. And you paid for a cruise as well, correct? That That's the cruise I was referencing with D.A. Willis, my mother, and myself. Okay, and because there's two cruises, so let's just talk about the first one. Okay. So the first one was um, you took, that's the one with your mother? Yes. And so you introduced D.A. Willis to your mother that trip. You all took a cruise together, the three of you. Yes. After the cruise was done, you and D.A. Willis flew to Aruba together, and your mom flew home. Yes. And you paid for all of this with your credit card, on your business credit card. I did. And are you saying that Ms. Willis paid you cash back for that? She did. Now, now, but, but let, let me make this distinction, though, um, because the, the number that you're looking at reflects the three people on the cruise ship. There were things that my mother and I did, um, just the two of us, that D.A. Willis didn't didn't do. And, and, and I'm not attributing that. I did not. My math is not good, but I did not include anything with your mother um, on well, this. Well, Can I show? Would, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's not separated out. Um, it, it, it just shows a charge on the on the uh, on the account when actually it would have been something with my mother and I. Um, Judge may approach with exhibits 10 and 11. They're both certified business records from one's from Vacation Express, one's from H2. I thought 10 was taxes. I'm sorry, 11 and 12. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. And, um, these are business records, Judge. Are there uh, cash deposits for which line up with the money that you have allegedly received from Ms. Willis to, quote, pay you back for her part of the trips? So, so here's the thing. In my bank records, you will see cash deposits. You will see check deposits. I can't say that you... you look through the bank records and you won't see cash deposits because I have two sources of, of income, sir. I, income comes from my private practice, my firm, and income comes from the, the contract here with, with Fulton County. Um, during the course of private practice, occasionally I will have occasion to deposit cash into my account. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, uh, look, it's now not fluid at all. It's not direct. Um, it's more closed than than open. I mean, yes, for certain we can say that, As by the way, Chase, I'm still waiting for the pictures of your new daughter uh, when she first uh, oh, yes. does, does the steepling. I'm still waiting for that to, uh, that, that instinct uh, to develop and kick in there um yeah so so although they're steepling and often people will go you know there's confidence i think the steeple here is is now definitely a, a barrier um he's less he's way less certain on the statement that he's making here around you know can you see these these 
definitive amounts of cash go into his account, which which say that um, he was paid for the the package, the part of the package, which was uh, the DA uh, tagging along with his mum uh, on on a on a cruise. So uh, he's in he's in uh, rougher water here. Uh, Greg, what do you think? I think part of the rough water is the guy actually ask a good question, which we haven't seen. We've seen all this capability of going, whoa, that was, no, that was, wait, he can't do it here. The question is more direct, so he's creating more pressure. And he eye blocks and starts to rub his palms together. Mark, I agree with you. I would say the reason I tell people not to do this is because there's a really good indicator. I'm confident. I'm not so confident. I'm absolutely not confident. And I see it in people all the time in, in corporations. I work in business, so I see it all the time in people doing that. But he does further, closes those hands together mm. and starts to rub. And that's what I call sacred space because I've created a barrier. So I've made a, a place that I feel safe and I'm going to comfort myself at the same time. So it's really powerful. And then he goes in this off the chart chaff and redirect and just flat doesn't answer. This is probably one of the worst ones for me. This is when I started to go, hold on, what's going on here? Chase, what do you got? Yeah, it's it's going to be tempting. I agree, uh, but it, it'll be tempting for you as you're watching this clip again to hear the attorney asking him if he deposited the money or not. That is not what's being asked. These are horrible questions. I'm sorry to say. I try to be an upward force uh, for everybody. <laughs> He's being asked if there are deposits that line up with the money uh received from uh, Fanny Fanny. He's unable to answer the question. There's a loss of fluency. There's non-answer statements, and there's a focus on irrelevant details with no ability to make a declarative statement that goes down at the end with a period. Scott, what do you got? All right. You guys covered everything. He doesn't answer the question. His movements are overall slow and intentional. But he's got hardcore eye contact on this. He wants to make sure that that this guy, he, he doesn't know what to expect, I think, because it's a different, uh, someone else asking him questions. It's a little bit different at this point. He's got praying hands. You know, I don't, I don't think that's a steeple. I think it's almost like, oh, God, please believe me as I do this. It's not. But that's what that reminds me of. It's, it's almost like he's praying to the guy to, to believe him as he's talking. Then he tries to give the impression that he is answering the question. And Greg, you nailed it. He didn't answer that question. That's that. No, he didn't do it. Didn't do it. That's all I got. You guys got all of it. Oh, nice lean. Beautiful. Chase, I'll give you that. One of those tape replays. Are there cash deposits which line up with the money that you have allegedly received from Miss Willis to, quote, pay you back for her part of the trips? So, so here's the thing. In my bank records, you will see cash deposits you will see check deposits. I can't say that you, you look through the bank records and you won't see cash deposits because I have two sources of, of income, sir. I, income comes from my private practice, my firm, and income comes from the, the contract here with, with Fulton County. Um, during the course of private practice, occasionally I will have occasion to deposit cash into my account. During the direct examination, you made a statement, at least I believe I heard it correctly, that you personal relationship, and now I'm talking about that characterized the sexual romantic relationship, was not a secret. Is that correct? Wait. If you're asking me if people knew that we were having sex. No, they didn't. I'm asking you whether the people knew that you were dating, whether you were romantically involved. You said that it was not a secret. Oh, it, it wasn't a secret. It was just private. My, my, my mother knew, obviously. Did anyone my, in the district attorney's office that has worked on this case know that you were dating or had a romantic relationship with District Attorney Willis? I don't know what they knew. Well, did you tell anyone? No. Do you have any knowledge of whether Miss Willis revealed it to anyone? I have no clue. Okay. Uh, so as far as you know, as far as you know from personal knowledge, no one in the DA's team knew, correct? That's correct. Okay. So if it was a legitimate relationship, 
Is there any particular reason why it was kept secret or private? It wasn't kept secret. It was kept private. And the purpose for that was? It's what we chose to do. I'm asking you why, though, not just because you chose. Why, if you're dating someone, why keep it private? So, two reasons. The first one is, and I want to say this respectfully in the right way, um, there are some people who are in the public eye who just don't like it, don't wish to be there. Um, I have tried to have lunch or dinner with her publicly, and I can't count the number of people that would approach the table or would accost us as we're trying to walk into a restaurant and just have lunch or have a meal. Um, it is not secret, it is private. We don't want the world, the world uh, asking questions or, or interrupting that time. So we weren't trying to keep anything a secret, Mr. Sadow. Um, okay. There's nothing secret or salacious about having a private life. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Chase, what do you got? So I got bored this morning going through. We got the video. This is number seven. We never call them numbers for you out there, but we number them in our little drop box. This is video number seven. And I'm taking the notes right here. And I'm like, I'm just going to just list off a massive cluster. That's <laughs> all I'm going to do. I'm not going to explain what everyone, everything means. Y'all can uh, jump on top of them if you want to. I'm we we should walk. go around the room and we'll call when as soon as one of us says it. We go at us three and you just mark it off. Swallow. Bang. <laughs> you know, every, every one of them. They, they won't do that. All right, here we go. Sorry, dude. All right. All right. All right. You all ready? Yeah. Defensive, smug, and avoidant. Mm -hmm. avoids basic questions, basic questions, uses unnecessary details in ex explaining, causing a detail mountain in unnecessary places, which makes automatically a detail valley where there should be honest information. It's a reasonable question that is very obvious with a huge, uh, maybe a huge deception here, but I'll say no giant behavioral clusters are there, but all of the verbal ones are there. There's minimal statements and mostly explanations, which are uh, maybe deceptive burritos wrapped in truth. That's all I got. Greg, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, a whole bunch of clusters of stuff going on here. He starts off very uncomfortable because we see him barriering for the first time, close, crossing his arms across his body to give him some space. We also see his chin down for the first real time. And his blink rate increases. So blink rate's usually associated with stress. And he's adapting with his mouth. Anything you do over and over and over is usually you're releasing stress. And that makes you more comfortable. I always equate it to if you're locked in a cage, you would pace. It's a way to take control of the environment you're in and make known from unknown. Until, until the questioner lobs a loser of a question. These guys need to learn to stay away from connotation questions ones that get, can be construed a certain way and answered in that way and keep it clean. The guy starts to move more slowly. And when this questioner steps into his personal life, it gives him the opportunity for more of this matadoring he's been doing. And if you don't believe that, look at his fingers and thumbs. When he raises his hands, his confidence is there. As he says, are you asking if I had sex? That is a chance for him to just turn and run. And what he does is he goes back. I'm, I'm going to go back and say, one more time, the elements of the information you're after, what you should start with. What do you really want to know? What you really want to know is, did you disclose your intimate relationship with the person who owns your employment contract? That's a pretty easy question. Pretty easy question. You could call her out by name, or you could just say that. And then the hard question would be, why did you not disclose? Then you can move to ethical issues. But you can't when you give a person a chance to run and dodge and run and dodge. And that's exactly what happens. He gets this opportunity to chaff and redirect and talk about private instead of non-disclosed relationships. Powerful thing. Scott, what do you got? All right. That first question, we see a big swallow before he goes in. And he tries to reframe it, reframe the question like you're talking about, Greg, but it doesn't work. He's got too much smiling. That tactic, tactic hasn't worked throughout this the whole time. And all we've seen so far is deception after deception after deception after cue deception. He's not deceiving anybody. 
that's what's so so odd but so funny about it because nobody i don't think anybody at this point's believing any of that the way he looks and, and all the cues he's throwing off he's just i think this guy's just a bold-faced liar and he's just laying it on thick just my opinion i could be wrong that's what i think and he's he's used been used to doing this is this is the kind of person that reminds me of somebody who's done that their whole life and they're just used to doing it and it's not working so in a way he's going to this little tiny panic mode and this is this this makes me feel stupid listening to this guy and talking about it so i think i'm gonna lay out the last two videos i'll just i'll just run the the thing mark what do you got yeah could, could be lying scott could be mis mistruthing uh could be one or the other right. You know, right. never, never underestimate the possibility of some mistruthing going on here. That's true. Uh, Greg, you mentioned fourth walling uh, at, at the start, which is this idea of uh, what, what, what Stanislavski called public solitude, which would be the idea of, you know, I'm, I'm on my own. Although people are asking me questions, I'm going to kind of ignore those and I'm just going to stick with my monologue that's that's going on. It's interesting in this, he he does break that fourth wall uh, in the classic sense and that goes straight down to the camera and says um, the world and looks and smiles down the camera, very aware throughout this, therefore, that this is a public display. There is no privacy involved in this. In fact, it's very interesting, the fourth wall, that that idea, and breaking the fourth wall, first happened in the early 19th century in, in theatre with um, with Ibsen, Chekhov, uh, when the performers would, would ignore the audience. Uh, before that, you know, uh, playwrights like Shakespeare actually write it in the text that you will talk directly to the audience. You'll talk directly to the audience, the other characters, people off stage, gods and demons. Everybody gets a conversation with the central uh, character. But uh, during the early 19th century, this fourth wall went off. It was a blip in theatre. It only lasted about 10 years. Everybody pretty much hated it in theatre. It wasn't very interesting. He breaks that fourth wall in a, in a filmic way. First time that was evident. So this is where my mind goes, Chase, when I'm bored. So, for, so <laughs> first time that was ever done filmically, 1918, Mary MacLaine in a film called Men Who, Who, uh, Men Who I've Made Love To. Silent film, but she looked straight down the camera and started talking. Uh, and, and this had never been done uh, before. And interestingly, that reminded me of Tracy Emin's piece of work, postmodern piece of work, Everyone I've Ever Slept With, which was a tent. It was more immersive. You'd, you'd look inside the tents and in the, in the, in the tent would be, uh, embroidered the names of the men that she'd, uh, that she'd slept with. So look, all of this about, uh, the idea of media and there being no privacy. That, uh, that there comes a point with media where you look straight down the camera and there's no privacy uh, at all. Uh, there, that, that was my little lecture on, uh, on Fourth Wall. Hope you all enjoyed that. One of those tape replays. During the direct examination, you made a statement, at least I believe I heard it correctly, that you, personal relationship, and now I'm talking about that characterized the sexual romantic relationship was not a secret. Is that correct? Wait. If you're asking me if people knew that we were having sex, no, they didn't. I'm asking you whether the people knew that you were dating, whether you were romantically involved. You said that it was not a secret. Oh, it, it wasn't a secret. It was just private. My, my, my mother knew, obviously. Did anyone my, in the district attorney's office that has worked on this case know that you were dating or had a romantic relationship with District Attorney Willis? I don't know what they knew. Well, did you tell anyone? No. Do you have any knowledge of whether Miss Willis revealed it to anyone? I have no clue. Okay. Uh, so as far as you know, as far as you know from personal knowledge, no one in the DA's team knew, correct? That's correct. Okay, so if it was a legitimate relationship, is there any particular reason why it was kept secret or private? It wasn't kept secret, it was kept private. And the purpose for that was? It's what we chose to do. I'm asking you why though, not just because you chose. Why, if you're dating someone, why keep it private? So, two reasons. The first one is, and I want to say this respectfully in the right way. Um, 
there are some people who are in the public eye who just don't like it, don't wish to be there. Um, I have tried to have lunch or dinner with her publicly, and I, I can't count the number of people that would approach the table or would accost us as we're trying to walk into a restaurant and just have lunch or have a meal. Um, it is not secret, it is private. We don't want the world, the world, uh, asking questions or, or interrupting that time. So we weren't trying to keep anything a secret, Mr. Sadow. Um, okay. There's nothing secret or salacious about having a private life. Nothing. I'm not suggesting that there was. Did you and Miss Willis go to the Hapeville condo prior to your relationship starting the beginning of 2022? Prior to having physical contact, prior, prior to having intercourse, did we go to the Hapeville condo? Again, you keep going to intercourse. I'm trying not to, but fine. The answer to that, my well, question would be yes. Did you and Miss Willis go to the Hapeville condo prior to what I want to say November 1st of 2021? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and the purpose for going to the Hapeville condo with Miss Willis prior to 2021 would have been what? Or prior to November 1 of 2021. Could have, be been, what? could have been any number of things because at, at that time. At, That's what I'm asking. So tell me. Yeah. Could have been any number of things because at that time um, she had a friend living in that condo. Miss, Miss Yearty lived in that condo. Okay. <clears throat> it maybe was my question was poorly worded. Let me try again. Your answer is yes, prior to November 1st of 2021, you would have gone to the Hapeville condo and been there with Miss Willis, correct? Yes. And you would have been there, as you indicated, for many reasons, right? Yes. Can you give me, just list a few of the reasons. Miss Yurdy resided there, went to visit her, um, maybe went to talk about uh, a, a document that I received. Um, you would go to the condo I and talk to about a document that you received? Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Absolutely. Any other reasons? None come to mind. None come to mind? No, sir. And uh, would you say that was frequent? When I say frequent, do you think prior to November 1st of 2021, you were at the condo more than 10 times? No, sir. So it would be less than 10 times? Yes, sir. So if phone records were to reflect that you were making phone calls from the same location as the condo before November uh, 1st of 2021, and it was on multiple occasions, the phone records would be wrong? If phone records reflected that, yes, sir. They'd be wrong. They'd be wrong. Okay. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, look, we're going to be together uh, on on Wednesday uh, in, in Dallas. Um if any of you invite me to your hotel room to look at some documents, don't think bad of me if I refuse that invitation. Come on. Uh, because <laughs> because I'm I'm unsure that 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 going and talking about documents is, is a de euphemism for 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 something else. I mean, I I I, I don't I don't get it. It that's reminds the, me that's the, called the subpoenas and chill. Right. <laughs> right. Nicely done. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. Uh, Chase Hughes, everybody. If you're driving home tonight, don't forget your car. Uh, it reminded me a great deal of of asking somebody to go and uh, view your etchings, uh, which again is a is a euphemism. At so first, I don't know whether you've heard of that euphemism, but first came a, about in a Hitchcock film in uh, called Blackmail in 1929. First time of this idea of come up and and look at my etchings. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I don't think there are any documents talked about uh, at all, at all. But I could be wrong. Uh, Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, what's what's interesting is the guy asks a question that allows him to ramble again. This guy's masterful at rambling, and he doesn't ask what I would have said. Hey, when did you first go to the condo? Boom. Was she with you? Boom. Why? Boom. I walk down and trap him, but he doesn't. These guys are asking questions that allow him to do all this dancing. He does. But this guy boldly self-amused now. Look at all that smile. Look at that stuff. And I don't think it's dupers. It's pronounced. 
It's pretty easy to see. There's nothing micro about it. It's there for you to see. And then the eye blocks after he says, well, then the phone records would be wrong. That's pretty bold, pretty bold. All I could say in this is if I ever need an attorney, I might call this guy because he could stand up to anybody just up in front of any court in Georgia and just go, well, no, Mr. Hartley didn't do that, even if I did. And that might be a good good trait to have in a lawyer. Chase, what do you got? This is getting more and more obvious with each passing video. Let's just break down the cluster here. Lip compression, uh, chaff and redirect, question and repetition, massive increase in blink rate, confusion about the friend living in the condo, which is an artificial injection of ambiguity when he's doing this. Like there was a person there trying to share that and a total loss of his ability to use pronouns an absolute perfect. This is the most perfect lack of pronouns that we've ever seen on the panel. Let's break down pronoun absence really fast. It's when somebody suddenly, and remember this is about detecting changes suddenly stops using pronouns in their language. And this is a result of an increase in cognitive load, our mental energy that reduces our ability to think clearly and it impacts our linguistic choices. So pronouns like I, me, my, we, us, they, them, they're the first to get sacrificed. They're the first thing our brain sacrifices linguistically. So it's also a distancing mechanism. It's kind of like a subconscious way to reduce their sense of personal responsibility for the statements. Uh, there's fading facts and repetition with the word absolutely. And I want you to take this one as a training tool. We look for changes. So when he talks about anything that's uh, provable and he's honest, his lips don't close and tighten immediately after he speaks, literally every time. In this clip, they tighten and compress every single time. That is a change and a cluster and a pattern. That's all I got. Scott, what do you got? Adult intellect from listening to this guy, so I'm going to move on. <laughs> One of those tape replays. <laughs> Did you and Miss Willis go to the Hapeville condo prior to your relationship starting beginning of 2022? Prior to having physical contact, prior, prior to having intercourse, did we go to the Hapeville condo? Again, you keep going to intercourse. I'm trying not to, but fine. The answer to that, from my question would be yes. Did you and Miss Willis go to the Hapeville condo prior to what I want to say November 1st of 2021? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and the purpose for going to the Hapeville condo with Miss Willis prior to 2021 would have been what? Or prior to November 1 of 2021. Could, could, have, be been, what? could have been any number of things because at, at that time. At, That's what I'm asking, to tell me. Yeah, could have been any number of things because at that time um, she had a friend living in that condo. Miss, Miss Yerdy lived in that condo. Okay. <clears throat> It maybe was my question was poorly worded. Let me try again. Your answer is yes. Prior to November 1st of 2021, you would have gone to the Hapeville condo and been there with Miss Willis, correct? Yes. And you would have been there, as you indicated, for many reasons, right? Yes. Can you give me just list a few of the reasons? Miss Yurdy resided there, went to visit her, um, maybe went to talk about uh, a, a document that I received. Um, you would go to the condo I to talk about a document that you received? Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Absolutely. Any other reasons? None come to mind. None come to mind? No, sir. And uh, would you say that was frequent? When I say frequent, do you think prior to November 1st of 2021, you were at the condo more than 10 times? No, sir. So it would be less than 10 times? Yes, sir. So if phone records were to reflect that you were making phone calls from the same location as the condo before November uh, 1st of 2021, and it was on multiple occasions, the phone records would be wrong? If phone records reflected that, yes, sir. They'd be wrong? They'd be wrong. Okay. Did you know, of personal knowledge, whether Miss Willis um, 
reviewed your affidavit before it was included with the response? I have no clue. So, as far as you know, personal knowledge, Ms. Willis did not know what you said in the affidavit. I didn't give it to her. That's what I said. You have no personal knowledge. No personal knowledge. And as far as you know, no one else has told you that she did or didn't. I hadn't asked anyone. The, and we, we've kind of worked this up a little bit, and the numbers could be off, but according to our numbers, um, $10,000, give or take, would have been reflected on your credit card statements in connection with things um, of potential benefit to Ms. Willis, okay? I want you just to assume that. Of the 10, assuming that there was $10,000, that you had on your credit cards. Is it your testimony that Ms. Willis paid you back $10,000 in cash? <laughs> not, I'm not acting about... Can I, can I uh, object? Uh, the characterization of $10,000 for Ms. Willis's travel, I don't believe is an accurate reflection of what the numbers, at least the summary that I've been provided by the defense do reflect. I think that's joint travel. Um, and so I... All right, Greg, what do you got? So Chase brought up last time starting to see deviations in this guy in his baseline. And we've seen a baseline of confidence up to now. You saw in the last time his hands started to curl, so he's losing confidence. Chase listed a whole bunch of other things that he did in there. But here we're going to see a massive deviation. Mark, I think there might be documents involved at the House. And it's probably this affidavit that we are being asked about. Because watch him change. He locks down. He looks down to break eye contact. He has a verbal tick. You'll bring that up, I'm sure, Mark, and a short head stroke when he's saying no, followed by an exaggerated, oversized head shake and a blink rate increase. He touches his face. He adapts in barriers by playing with his glasses, though there's no reason. His respiration increases. He feigns confusion with his face. Um, not sure. Then he does eye blocking. All this doesn't fit anything he's done to now. And what we are in the business of, and Chase, you say this eloquently all the time, we're about change. We're looking for deviation. This is a massive block of deviation when he's denying any of her involvement in this affidavit. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah. Uh, so I think this is really hot for him. There is something going on here which is really uh, uh, peaking uh, and, and giving him a, a full kind of neural brain overload here. Not only do we get him wiping the sweat from underneath his eyes uh, at this point, but he goes through a whole bunch of different expressions, I think kind of testing out potential characters that he could be here. We've got stoicism, concern, innocence, confusion, pleasure, incredulity, relaxation, fixation, and a whole bunch of others. And that's all in about one minute 20. Now, most of it in our real life, you know, when, when we're when we've got a good idea of what's what's true about a situation or factual about a situation, for about a minute and a half, we probably have one idea in our head. One idea. He goes through several. He's auditioning ideas at, at this point, kind of rifling through them to go. What can I play uh, at this point? There's too much happening here for this to be. Uh, real life. I mean, real life is messy. Real life is complex, but it isn't this complex. Uh, so uh, he's 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 on overload here. Chase, what do you got on this one? Yeah, y'all got it all. Kind of done. Scott? Me. Yeah, me too. I'm over it. One of those tape replays. No personal knowledge. Whether Miss Willis um, reviewed your affidavit before it was included with the response. I have no clue. So, as far as you know, personal knowledge, Ms. Willis did not know what you said in the affidavit. I didn't give it to her. That's what I said. You have no personal knowledge. No personal knowledge. And as far as you know, no one else has told you that she did or didn't. I hadn't asked anyone. The, and we, we've kind of worked this up a little bit, and the numbers could be off, but according to our numbers, um, $10,000, give or take, would have been reflected on your credit card statements in connection with things um, of potential benefit to Ms. Willis, okay? I want you just to assume that. Of the 10, assuming that there was $10,000 that you had on your credit cards, is it your testimony that Ms. Willis paid you back $10,000 in cash? <laughs> not, I'm not acting about... Can I, can I uh, object? Uh, 
the characterization of ten thousand dollars for Miss Willis's travel, I don't believe is an accurate reflection of what the numbers, at least the summary that I've been provided by the defense, do reflect. I think that's joint travel. Um, so I Just one more thing. Okay, we've watched all these videos and uh, gone around and talked about it. Mark, what's your verdict so far? It's a classic example of mistruthiness going on. Chase, what do you got? That was short. So as we've dissected Wade's behavior, we've observed clusters of actions that, if they were isolated, might seem innocuous. But when they're together, they weave a very compelling story, I think, of some strong evasion and some very serious discomfort. So this analysis is not about vilifying anybody. But it's a good reminder that words can be manipulated, but the body tells it's kind of an unvarnished, truthful thing here. And when the body's telling a different story than the words, there's something going on. And I think it's a very good reminder to look deeper than the surface in, in your everyday life. Just keep practicing these skills and never get convinced that you have it all figured out. That's the ultimate secret. Greg? Yeah, I think it's a great call out. But if you watch this guy when he first came in, he had a plan. This is a good example of how stress builds up and the body will, to your point, start to tell what it's thinking, no matter what your mouth says. You're, I often say three pieces of our body language of the five I teach people very simply in the simplest form of body language are there to tell our story. The other two are there to comfort or protect self. And when the ones that are telling the story don't line up and the ones that are there to protect self start to outnumber them it's a really bad sign this by the end he's got a pile a pile of things or a cluster of behaviors that make it look like he is less than what was the word uh, untruth truthy mistruth <laughs> mistruth. <laughs> less than, yeah less yeah. than truthy very very mistruthy he's mistruthy so scott what do you got i think this is just an old school this guy's just full of shit. <laughs>